Welcome everyone. Welcome to Woodstock City Council, March 21st, 2024, the meeting we've all been waiting for. This hybrid meeting is being held in person here in council chambers and electronically in accordance with section 238 subsection 3.3 .3 of the Municipal Act and section 16.6.24 .6 of the City of Woodstock Procedure Bylaw. This meeting is being live streamed to the city's YouTube channel and recording will be posted on the city's website following the meeting. An agenda of the meeting can be found on the agendas, meetings and minutes page of the city's web website. And everyone is here tonight, so there is no counselors attending virtually. And we got a big meeting ahead of us, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, we did have a closed session of council that uh, ended at 641 today. Uh, next up, any disclosure of pecuniary interests? Seeing none, disclosure of new business. And we do have Councillor Martin put forth the following motion, Councillor Martin. Thank you, through you, uh, Mary Accioni, that Woodstock City Council reconsider the following motion from item 14.D.3 at the July 13th, 2023 regular council meeting, that Woodstock City Council approve the building of a new outdoor pool at Cowan Fields with a budget of 5,350,000 with 5 million to be financed through debt and the decommissioning of Lions Pool. Thank you. We will be dealing with that a little bit later on. And Councillor Leatherborough has a motion. Whereas the Canadian Mental Health Association of Ontario provided a 2024 pre-budget submission to the Ontario government entitled Maintaining the Momentum, supporting the community mental health and addictions sector. And whereas this submission recommends a 7% increase in funding for the community mental health and addictions sector. And whereas CMHA branches divert visits to emergency departments, saving $7.5 million in hospital costs over the past two years. And whereas CMHA proposes to expand the availability of crisis response models, allowing paramedics and police officers to get back on the road quicker after responding to a crisis. And whereas the work of CMHA supports municipalities in addressing the homelessness crisis. And whereas CMHA branches are experiencing significant staff turnover due to stagnating wages. Now, therefore, it be it resolved that Woodstock City Council supports the Canadian Mental Health Association of Ontario's 2024 pre-budget submission to the Ontario government and the request for increased funding. And further, that this resolution be circulated to the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Peter Bethlen Falvey, Minister of Finance, the Honourable Ernie Hardiman, Oxford MPP, and the Canadian Mental Health Association, Thames Valley and Addiction and Mental Health Services. Thank you. And that also will be dealt with a little later on in the agenda. Any matters arising from the minutes? Seeing done, the minutes. Councillor Schattenberg. Yeah, moved by Councillor Schattenberg, seconded by Councillor Wismer Van Meer, that the minutes of the regular meeting of Woodstock City Council held on March the 7th, 2024, be adopted. Thank you. Any questions or concerns with those? Seeing none, all those in favor? None opposed, carried. Uh, no additions to the agenda that I'm aware of. Uh, no presentations this evening, but we do have some delegations. We did have a, a delegation withdrawal, which was 8A, so that brings us to 8B. Uh, Ms. Otolik and Mr. Mazur, please welcome. I'm sorry, Kat, if I didn't say that correctly. No. Good. It's Accioni, so I'm used to it. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. No problem. I don't see the medal. That's an I elusive mouse. Yeah, it very much is. Where did you go? Here you are. Good evening, Mayor and Councillors. My name is Katharina Otulak. I'm here today in my role as Vice Chair of the Downtown Woodstock BIA Board of Directors. With me this evening is Wes Mazur, who is also a director on our board. We're very grateful for this opportunity to share the BIA's perspective regarding the Downtown Streetscape Master Plan. As a BIA, all our actions are guided by our vision statement and our directive. 
we strongly believe that downtown Woodstock is the heart of Woodstock. Our vision is to make downtown Woodstock a destination of choice for residents and visitors, for shopping, dining, entertainment, diverse activations, and cultural experiences. Our directive is to improve and sustain the vibrancy and prosperity of downtown Woodstock through beautification and promotional efforts. To provide some brief background about BIAs, a business improvement area, BIA, is a made in Ontario innovation that allows local business people, people and commercial property owners and tenants to join together and with the support of the municipality, organize, finance and carry out physical improvements and promote economic development in their district. Traditionally, a BIA is a body established by a municipality using the specific business improvement area provisions and the Municipal Act from 2001. As the BIA's board of director, we present over 250 businesses that are located in downtown Woodstock. We are fortunate to have many legacy businesses that have been with us for decades, but we also have many new businesses that open up shop in the last year or two because they believe in the potential of downtown Woodstock. Over the past 15 years, the city of Woodstock has undertaken a number of plans and studies focused on sustaining and improving the downtown. In 2019, city council approved the downtown development plan. In it, the streetscape master plan was identified as a top priority to beautify the downtown. After a period of thorough public consultation, the downtown Woodstock streetscape master plan was adopted by city council in October, 2022 and brought to city council for budget approval in December, 2023. However, in this December, 2023 meeting, city council decided to defer the decision on the streetscape master plan until March due to concerns of overall cost and impact to the taxpayer. City staff was asked to seek cost saving measures and to conduct another survey to seek public input. In the meantime, the physical condition of the current streetscape negatively impacts the perception of safety and pedestrian experience of downtown. Thank you, good evening, everybody. Um, this information on this slide, the top half was pulled directly from the streetscape master plan. And we as the BIA agree with the consultant's recommendation that these elements are essential to improvements to our downtown core, uh, being pedestrian clear zones and crossings, bump outs, pass throughs, lanes and alleys, lighting, on street parking, signage and wayfinding, plus more. Without the downtown streetscape project, the BIA's ability to fulfill the vision and directive that Kat just shared a few moments ago could be compromised. This project isn't just about urban renewal, it's also about breathing life into our community, revitalizing our core and creating a vibrant, welcoming environment for residents and visitors alike. We should not let this opportunity slip away, but rather think about the fact that it's not just concrete and asphalt, it's also about our collective future, our identity, as well as our pride. Some of the benefits that we can see by proceeding with the streetscape include um, some much needed investment, such as economic growth, community engagement, tourism and recreation, safety and accessibility, as well as environmental benefits. Overall, investing in downtown revitalization and streetscape improvements can create a more livable, sustainable, vibrant and economically thriving community for residents and visitors. We want, and in my notes, I strike out that word and say need, our downtown businesses to thrive. We urge council to consider proceeding with implementing the downtown streetscape master plan, as well as revisioning of Museum Square. We love downtown Woodstock, we know you do too. And on behalf of the downtown Woodstock BIA, we thank you very much for your time and your consideration. Thank you. Any questions of the delegation? Councillor Leatherborough. 
through your worship to uh, both Wes and Kat, uh, just a comment of thank you very much for your presentation. Um, last night was the second BIA um, hosting downtown hall that was hosted at Theater Woodstock and it was well attended. Um, lots to discuss on the agenda. Um, and I am very um, pleased to share that the commitment with not only the BIA board, but with BIA membership um, is comprised of entrepreneurs as well as volunteers whether it is the board and the committees, which were shared and identified last night. Um, so I just wanna thank you for your presentation today. Thank you, anyone else? Councillor Lauder. I thank you for the presentation. And uh, I just wanted to um, mention what the city has um, helped out and, and has been doing uh, for the downtown. Um, and I know this is apart from anything that you're talking about, but I just want to remind uh, people about our community improvement program and, and the most recent information that I've received regarding the community improvement program to date and ballpark figures since its inception in 2011 and, and through to uh, November of 23, $710,341 has been given out in uh, grants and 766,874 in interest-free loans for over 40 pro projects in the downtown. There's approximately 700,000 out in loans which have just uh, started to be paid back in the past few years. As some loans are reaching maturity, we should be seeing uh, the loan payments happening on a regular basis prior to the city has been paying out money with little or no loan repayments, which is in the parameters of the program. Now with the oldest loans maturing, we are starting to see loans being paid in full. There's also a tax grant back attached to the improvements in which if they qualify any increases in assessment related to improvement, both the county and the city grants back the amount of their taxes, the amount which can vary from, for example, $1,000 annually to a maximum of 20,000 annually. And this is each year for five years. So I just wanted to let uh, you know that, uh, that, that um, we are trying to help out and um, uh, it is helping some of the businesses downtown and um, the things that have happened there. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, I'd just like to say thank you. I, as well, was at the BIA town hall meeting last night. Uh, I really like that. I love seeing the local business owners. Thank you for being here tonight. And of course, for all those that were here last night, uh, we have to do this together. Um, I, it was said last night at the BIA meeting that, uh, of course, they're not looking for the city to do it on their own. They're trying to take some ownership of this as well. They're uh, kind of pledging with their different committees and everything else to assisting in this project and uh well we will see where this goes from here um i will say if no other questions seeing none thank you very much then no resolution is required as this item is dealt with under department reports item 14a.3 so thank you thank you thank you for your time next up miss jarvie Eight point C for those uh, watching at home. Yeah. Good evening, Your Worship and members of Council. Uh, my name is Carrie Jarvie. I'm the Downtown Development Officer for the City of Woodstock. I am presenting the Downtown Woodstock BIA budget on their behalf, um, just so that we have, um, we're, as their city liaison, it is um, beneficial for me to be present it um, to you this evening. Um, next slide. 
um, as it was just mentioned by two of our board members, um, one of the great things that has happened in the last year with the BIA um, board is they have really um, managed to um, solidify their vision and directive, which was uh, pointed out earlier this evening. Um, their vision is to make downtown Woodstock is the heart of Woodstock. Their vision is to make downtown Woodstock a destination of choice for residents and visitors for shopping, dining, entertainment, diverse activations and cultural experiences. You'll see that their budget does reflect um, those items. Um, one of the, we're based on the budget that was circulated with your package, you'll see that the 2023 prior audited financials, um, their 2023 revenues were very close to budget. Um, 2023 expenses were lower um, due to uh, less staffing. Um, I, we They were actually staffless for a bit, so um, I was able to support them for a little bit more time then. And then now we actually have um, a part-time operations manager that has been with the BI since July, which is um, very exciting. Um, the largest expenses relate to the return of Street Fest, which was last July, which was um, incredibly successful and expanded advertising. Uh, we've been doing a lot of paid boosted posts on social media, um, a lot of print advertising and such. Um, for 2024, um, they have decided to keep their levy the same as 2023 and not increase the levy. Although their levy was reduced during COVID, it has been um, decided by the board to keep their levy the same, just to be cognizant of the fact that people have had challenges with their businesses even after COVID, um, and utilize contribution from bad debt reserve to offset their expenses. 2024 expenses are actually going to be quite consistent to 2023. You'll see that staffing costs cover the part-time operations manager and a part-time clean team person who works about 15 hours a week. Um, the part-time operations manager is about 25 hours per week. Advertising and marketing is still a significant um, portion of their budget. Um, it's really to broaden the reach of the BIA through social media channels and um, doing a lot more print advertising that is uh, broader, like Day Tripper and things like that. Uh, beautification funds are going to be used for additional Christmas lighting, which was quite successful last year. And it's great to be able to support um, City of Woodstock's Parks Department in the great work that they do in Museum Square. And lastly, promotion and events will include an expanded Woodstock shopping nights. Those now continue throughout the year, um, every um, once a month. We are also doing the lunchtime concert series again this year from the middle of June until the end of August. So lunchtime concerts from noon to two every Thursday. And Street Fest will be July 19th to 21st with the 21st being the Southgate car cruise and Christmas in the Square, which was interesting last year. We condensed Christmas in the Square to two weekends and we ended up actually having 500 pictures taken which we usually would have 603 weekends so i think that's really um showing that there's a lot of interest in active activations downtown are there any questions any questions uh councillor wismer van Meer? um through the chair just a general comment i think that this past year proved that the bia is doing some fantastic things um i've had a lot of people comment on the activity that's been happening downtown they like the music they like um i, I love the shopping nights myself i think that's yeah. a really great addition to that i'm glad you've kept it going through the year but um kudos to everybody that's involved in the bia because i think they're doing a, a bang up job right now i agree thank you counselor thank you any other questions from mr Arby? Seeing none. Okay. Uh, looking for a motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Moved by myself that Woodstock City Council approved the Downtown Woodstock BIA Board of Management 2024 budget as presented. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Lauder. Discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. Next up, we have consideration of planning reports. Welcome. So this is for those following at home, ZN 8-23-19, 9A. Thank you. Uh, good evening, council, staff, members of the public. Uh, 
in light of tonight's agenda and the fact that you heard these on Monday, I'll try to be as brief as the planner knows how to be. Um, so uh, application for zone change ZN82319 in the name of 1000257649 Ontario Inc. and German Freight Lines Inc. The subject lands are described as part lot 18, plan 1654, and are municipally known as 1015 Ridgeway Road. The subject lands are designated business park in the county's official plan and are currently zoned special general industrial zone M3-2 and they're proposed to be zoned general industrial M3. The lands to be rezoned are approximately 2,891 square meters in area and contain a portion of a warehouse. The applicants are proposing to rezone the lands from special general industrial to general industrial to permit the full range of uses within the M3 zone and they're specifically uh, proposing a public garage in this case. Uh, it should be noted that only a portion of the subject lands are zoned M32 and the remainder are already zoned M3. Surrounding land uses consist primarily of industrial uses with some agricultural uses in close proximity to the south. Highway 401 is also in close proximity to the north of the subject lands. The identified use as a public garage is a low intensity industrial use that is supported by the business park designation and is surrounded by similar uses, including fabricators, industrial suppliers, manufacturers, and other automotive uh, public service garages. Uh, further, the, the M32 zone already contains a, a number of industrial uses that are similar or potentially more impactful than a public garage. Um, the difference between a public garage and an automotive service station, which is also permitted in the M3 zone is a matter of emphasis. A public garage, the emphasis is on repairs and things like that, but they also sell gasoline, whereas an automotive service station, the primary uh, use is to be the sale of fuels, but also allows for repair and things like that. Uh, in light of the foregoing, planning staff are of the opinion that the proposal to rezone the subject lands to general industrial to permit the lands for the full use of industrial uses allowed in that zone is consistent with the relevant policies of PPS and maintains the general intent and purpose of the official plan and staff recommend approval of the application. Thank you. Any questions through to Mr. Miller? Councillor Leatherbrow, did I just see your hand up? Sorry. Okay. Any questions? Councillor Schoenberg. Yeah, thanks to the mayor. Through to Mr. Miller. Would the... Uh business be required to put some sort of privacy fencing up to be able to not uh, see the, the vehicles and the trucks that are sort of under repair um, inside their shop area? Through the chair, that's not a requirement um, to use the site as it is. Um, should they propose any changes to that, that's something that could be looked through the site plan control process, but it's not something that's just required um, should they just start using the property as is. Any other questions for the planner? All right, seeing none, looking for a motion. Councillor Leatherborough. Moved by myself that Woodstock City Council approve the application for zone change for lands described as part lot 18, plan 1654, City of Woodstock, to rezone the subject lands from special general industrial zone M3-2 to general industrial zone M3, and further that any comments received from the public were reviewed and considered before the decision was made in relation to this planning matter. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Martin. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. Next up, we have 9B. Mr. Miller, uh, ZN 8-23-20. Thank you. In the name of 1000538283 Ontario, Inc., the subject lands are described as part lots 7 and 8, block W, plan 49, and are municipally known as 54 Kent Street. The subject lands are designated Central Business District in the county's official plan, are currently zoned entre Entrepreneurial District Zone C3, and the proposed zone is Central Commercial Zone C5. The lands to be rezoned are approximately 636 square meters and contain a vacant building. The applicants are proposing to rezone the lands from C3 to C5 to permit a wider range of commercial uses um, that are consistent with the uh, Central Commercial Zone. Specifically, the applicant has indicated an interest in including convenience store type uses and a pizza shop. 
The proposed zoning is consistent with the central business district designation in the official plan and the expanded uses better are better suited to the existing structure that exists on the subject lands. The central business district is intended to provide a full range of commercial uses and the subject lands are immediately adjacent to an existing retail plaza. In light of the foregoing planning staff are of the opinion that the proposal to rezone the subject lands to central commercial to permit the full range of uses allowed in that zone is consistent with the relevant policies of the PPS and maintains the intent and purpose of the official plan uh, and planning staff recommend approval of the application. Thank you. Any questions of the planner? Seeing none, I'll look for a motion on the floor. Councillor Tate, second by Councillor Wismer Van Meer. I'll move that with Suck City Council approve the application for zone change for lands described as a part lot seven and eight, block W, plan 49, City of Woodstock, to rezone the subject lands from interpretable district zone C3 to central commercial zone C5, and further that any comments received from the public were reviewed and considered before the decision was made in relation to this plan and matter. Thank you. Discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. That brings us to number 10, consideration of correspondence, which we don't have any. No staff presentations tonight, no mayor's reports tonight, and no councillor reports tonight. We do, of course, have some department reports. So going to administrative services, 14A.1, 2023 tender awards. Looking for a motion, Councillor Schattenberg. The Woodstock City Council received the 2023 tender awards report as information. Thank you. Do I have a seconder on that? Councillor Tate, discussion or questions? Councillor Schattenberg. First of all, just a comment. I noticed that every um, one item on this, probably about a dozen of them, all had multiple uh, bids on the tender, so to speak. In fact, the minimum was uh, three on any one of them. Maybe just a question, though, maybe towards uh, Brian Connors in the Parks and Recreation Department. I noticed that the uh, the fee was quite a bit under, or the cost was quite a bit under the, the, the charge for, for tree planting. This tree farm, do they supply the trees and the planting of the trees, or just, just, just the trees themselves? Uh, Your Worship, through to the Councillor's question, yes, this would be um, for the full service, um, both trees and planting. Any further comments or questions? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? That is carried, none opposed. Next up, we have 14A.2, remove. Numeration and Expenses Report of 2023. Councillor Leatherborough. Moved by myself that Woodstock City Council received the 2023 renumer, remun, oh no, remun, remun, I can't do it. Thank you. Renumeration and Expenses Report as information. Thank you. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Lauder, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. Next up, we have 14A.3, Downtown Woodstock Streetscape Master Plan Implementation Options. Looking for a motion on the floor. Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Moved by myself that Woodstock City Council direct staff to proceed with option four and approve a revision of the 2024 capital budget to include 2.7 million for project INF 001 through eight to be financed by debenture and further that city council direct staff to proceed with revising the museum square portion of the downtown Woodstock streetscape master plan to incorporate the demolition of 478 484 Dundas and a city hall expansion and approval and approve an additional 60,000 for project INF 00138 to be funded from the capital reserve. Okay, thank you. Do I have a seconder on that motion? Councillor Martin, discussion. Would you like to speak to that, Councillor Wismer Van Meer? Um, yeah, so I think that, um, I'll try to keep it as brief as I can. Um, we did the survey, we asked for people to give their feedback. I know that there is um, a lot of numbers that are in there. There's a lot of comments as well that were in there as well. 
But when it came down to what people wanted to see, option four of this, I need a windsock on my microphone. Um, uh, option four of breaking this into smaller portions to be broken up over time was what was receiving the most um, support. I had a meeting this week with some of the staff from Kin Carden who recently just went through their own streetscape. Now theirs was quite an, an elaborate one. It was infrastructure rebuilding of um, water main sewers and so on. But um, through the conversations with them, they highly encouraged looking at smaller portions as well. The reason I am supporting this downtown streetscape, and I know that people are talking about the talking about the what this means for our taxpayers. We've been talking about this for a while now, but it is accessibility that stands out to me. Our sidewalks are not safe. I watched a gentleman fall right in front of City Hall a week before Christmas, bloodied and confused. We had to call him an ambulance. I mean, people can't be injuring themselves on our sidewalks like that. And the report from our engineering department does not advise to just fixing the sidewalks because of having to cut into pavement, which can deteriorate that quicker than if you were to just leave them. And I don't think leaving our sidewalks is an option. I think accessibility is important. We have an aging population and it needs to be an inclusive space for everybody. And for me, the accessibility portion, more than the beautification, which is being, that word is being used a lot, to me is the accessibility that we really need to be considering here. And that is what is pushing me to make this decision. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mayor Accioni. Um, I came to the same conclusion as Councillor Wismer Van Meer on option number four, and I did seriously give consideration to option number three of uh, delaying the project and, and, and asked about what would the option be, what would it look like if we delayed and also put away money in reserves while we delayed. Um, and after asking for some further clarification on what is the benefit, what 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 costs us the most, what benefits the most, what costs us the least, what benefits the taxpayer and the resident. Um, and, and really, no matter how you look at the numbers, there's no ideal win-win. Uh, if we delay and put money into reserves, that has an impact today. And if we move ahead, and issue debt, that has an impact, but that debt is spread over a longer term and therefore has a lower impact annually on the resident. And so for that reason, I support number four. Um, and uh, given the amount of work that will happen in Museum Square with the building next door, with plans for an expansion for City Hall, that's where this motion resonates for me. Thank you. Any other comments or questions or thoughts? Councillor Tate? Uh, just for the public's benefit, can it be explained what option four is? Will they understand it? Yep, what's that? Okay, through to you, Harold. Would you mind explaining that? Thank you. Your Worship, Your Worship through the council. Yes, option four basically is um, taking the, the current um, project that we've been working on from uh, Light to Wellington and breaking it into a smaller portion so that we would just do the portion from Rydell to Wellington instead and then we would leave to get, leave the rest of it for a, remain, a, a later date. Thank you and thanks for bringing that up. Uh, Councillor Tate. Okay, so to this date, Councillor Reed with Council, not just this one, uh, has spent 4.5 million in buying up the building Adjacent to the museum square with the goal to make the downtown a destination um, spot by hosting events in this space. To me, that's where the focus should be. The goal is for the people of this downtown to spend taxpayers' dollars wisely and what would get the best value for the taxes. This street was just paved five years ago. We have streets all over the city with dire need of actual repair. I would like Council to explain to the taxpayer how replacing a perfectly good five year old street or sidewalk is going to draw people into downtown. I am aware of the gentleman that fell, but he actually fell, tripped on the step walking into the town. So as soon as you commit the taxpayer to one stage, you're committing the taxpayer to all three stages. There's no way to water this down. So the cost, whether you do it in stages or not, the total project is over $11 million when you include the cost of 4 and 7.4. 
And even if you're just doing the first stage, you end up doing all three stages of the block. So there's approximately 11,000 homes in the city. And the cost of 11 million is you're asking every single household in the city to pay a thousand dollars for three blocks of road that once again, I'll remind you, was replaced five years ago. I have a recorded data. It sounds like we're having a little difficulties with your mic too, so maybe bring it a little closer to you. They're saying that's a little bit low, just so you know. Any other discussion? Councilor Lauder? Thank you. Um, I will not be supporting the motion as it was written, writ, uh, read uh, for the redevelopment of any part of the Dundas Street as outlined in the suggested resolution. I've read through all the comments from the survey and uh, the majority of the people are concerned about taxes, safety, garbage, and homelessness. For those having to renew their mortgages, cost of living, et cetera, makes it, it meeting the, their needs um, is, uh, is, is uh, top priority for these people. As I said before, tearing up a perfectly good street with at least 20 more years of life is something I cannot support when there are so many streets in the immediate area and throughout the city that require redoing. When the street was done in 2018, 2019, there was never talk of redoing the entire street and sidewalk. The lighting was done approximately 10 years ago. Then many of the light standards were also replaced at that time. Muse Museum Square was always been the real focus and I think we are moving forward with the purchase of the demolition of the Dairy Capital and the previous Sabians store. And most recently the purchase and uh, it, there will be the removal in the near future of the TriStar. My focus is on Museum Square and always has been with added activities going on in the square with the theater, museum and art gallery in, gallery in close proximity. That is what will bring people downtown. The other important issue is to entice those who own property to develop more housing uh, for people to live in the downtown and that will bring vibrancy to our downtown. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Um, through the chair, just a general comment. I don't disagree what Councillor Tate and Councillor Lauder have both brought up. I think Museum Square, definitely the revitalization of the Museum Square is very important, but I also think that what we have right now is working. We have maybe the gravel area could use a little bit of attention, but I think the BIA is doing a great job bringing activities down to the museum square and bringing people down there. Um, just to, to Councillor Tate, I'm, the gentleman that maybe you saw fell over or you heard about was over the step, but I watched this gentleman trip over the sidewalk. I was there with another citizen when it happened. So this was not to do with steps. This was cobblestone of our sidewalk that was uneven. And unfortunately, the gentleman being an elderly man caught his foot and went down. So to me, if we want people coming downtown and enjoying Museum Square, that accessibility needs to be there and it needs to be safe for people to get to our downtown, in my opinion. Thank you. Councillor Schattenberg. Yeah, thanks. Just a, just a comment, not a question. I know that uh, we redid the intersection and put uh, traffic lights in advanced Siddert and Dundas. And at that time, the original plan was to go all the way down just Dundas Street all the way down to Oxford, but to just did that one intersection. And if people look, take a look at the, uh, the cost, in fact, it was in the one report we just mentioned a little while ago, it was actually whatever, 250000 under budget because of the fact that it was just concentrated on the intersection. So we're still stuck with the fact, not maybe stuck with the fact, but projecting the fact in our um, capital forecast book, 25 till 28, that uh, Dundas Street has to be done. And when I say that, I mean sewers, water mains, all that stuff, and the roads and the sidewalks from that Dundas intersection at Van Sittard all the way down to Mill Street. And then I also looked in the book, what also has to be done, and I think it was 26, is George Street on, on Wellington from George to Dundas, and then Dundas on Wellington, south all the way to Main Street. So in theory, if you had a business that was between Riddell and Wellington on Dundas, you could be looking at four consecutive years of construction in your in your neighborhood, quite frankly. And I know we could bulk up other projects, sure, but um, that would continue 
through two more phases of doing the downtown too. And I just don't think the downtown necessarily needs to be done if the sewers and, and water mains and all those are, are fine at this point in time. Not to say it couldn't be or shouldn't be done in the future, but uh, just, just not now, it's just too much cost. Thank you. Any other comments? Councillor Leatherborough. Uh, through your worship, thank you to um, my colleagues for sharing your thoughts on this project. I know we talked about it back in December and here we are at the end of March. Um, I will be supporting option four. I think um, reflecting on the process of where we were in December to now, I think that this is certainly reasonable. It does get the project going. And um, if anybody is viewing the report under option four, what stood out to me was, quote, staging the full streetscape also provides the opportunity to adjust future sections as desired and to learn from any issues during the first phase so that we, so that they can be addressed in subsequent phases, end quote. And so... I also want to just be considerate too that this will be a disruption to business owners. Um, but if there is one thing that everyone should be proud about, proud about in the city of Woodstock is that everyone does support local. Um, I am confident in not only the BIA board, but also, as I mentioned earlier, the BIA membership, as well as Carrie Jarvie, who is not technically the BIA, but does a lot of assisting, um, and Dwayne Kumla Thomas, who is the BIA uh, staffer, if you will. So. Um, I, I am happy to see option four on the floor at the moment. I do fully support it. And I think that um, it'll give the BIA um, another opportunity to fulfill the vision and the made mandate and support businesses while this construction um, will, will commence. Thank you. Any other comments or questions of staff? Well, then I got a couple things to say. Um, this is the first of many tonight big decisions. Um, we've been talking about this for a very long time in these council chambers. It's no secret. Uh, we've been looking at it over a few of our terms. We have spent a fair bit of money on this already, looking at plans and everything. I've been excited for a very long time to see this come together. Uh, when we start looking at the numbers of millions, and of course the project uh, for those watching at home, option two of the $7.4 million to kind of go ahead and do it all, I was absolutely not comfortable with that. I thought that was just way too much to ask anybody to pay for. Um, I really personally, uh, I feel more comfortable with option four. Um, Downtown's the heart of our city. We have to continue to support it. We have to put our money where our mouth is. We have to do everything we can to keep not only the businesses thriving, but people coming downtown and keeping it beautiful and showing to all the residents of the city of Woodstock that we believe in our downtown. And I ultimately feel this is one of those ways that it's not everything that I would love to see. I would love to be able to say that we're going to go ahead and do it all. And, but again, keeping everybody's finances in mind, I recognize the financial burdens we're all facing. Um, but again, it's a project long overdue, been talked about for so, so long. So I still believe one step is better than four and doing something and getting an idea. And as Councillor Leatherborough mentioned, are brought up of the doing it at least in a stage where we can learn from it and maybe move on and adapt and look at how things going forward are because of course our museum square is going to be a big priority moving forward and looking at what might work for that so for that reason my vote is going to be on option four as it is on the floor um apologizing to the businesses maybe saying i'm sorry we can't i can in good faith give you everything but i want to give you something to work with and continue working with the city and hoping and seeing where this goes so Councillor Tate. Yes, it's my mic probably went to her, but I just want to clarify. So when you commit to the first phase, you're committing to all three phases. So let's not confuse to the taxpayer that they're not going to be on the hook for this amount. So from my understanding, if we went ahead with option four, and maybe this is through to the city engineer, it sounds like it's going to pass. Um, option four could be completed this year. So that will be the goal of the tax assessment this year. Is that correct? Let me just clarify 
your worship through the council i can comment on the current construction but um yes we anticipate if if council instructs us to go ahead with option four that the project would be would be finished this year a uh, question through to you uh mr dahan then if like councillor tate has mentioned in your opinion does this commit us to this whole program or could we simply you know um do this kind of first stage let's call it stage one phase one whatever we want to call it and then kind of literally change gears halfway through we don't have to do it next year we can do it in other years ahead is that correct your worship council can do what does whatever they want yeah. <laughs> as long as it's not illegal right <laughs> so then of course uh we can decide not to moving ahead next year and, and looking at when your worship if i might um i would kind of look at it as, as different parts of the puzzle they can all be interchanged you could you could do museum square next or go back or split the rest the rest of it up into one section or two sections or perfect. yeah there, there are many options way or ways to proceed yeah perfect thank you very much any other comments or questions? It is a recorded vote then. I will turn it over to the clerk. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. The motion was moved by Councillor Wismer Van Meer. So we'll start with you, Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Yes. Mayor Accioni. Yes. Councillor Lauder. No. Councillor Leatherbarrow. Yes. Councillor Martin. Yes. Councillor Schattenberg? No. And Councillor Tate? No. That motion carries four to three. Okay. Thank you very much, anyone. And those watching, that does mean we are going ahead with at least, let's call it phase one. Um, and that was Riddell to Wellington, if I'm correct. Right? Okay. Thank you. Moving on. Uh, next up, we have 14A.4, sale proceeds of the former Woodstock Hydro Building. Looking for a motion on the floor. Councillor Leatherborough. Moved by myself that Woodstock City Council allocate the proceeds from the sale of 16 Graham Street to the purchase of 476, four, excuse me, 476, 484 Dundas Street and that the debenture financing be reduced accordingly. Thank you. Do I have a seconder on that motion? Councillor Tate. Discussion? No. Nope. Yes. Yep. Councillor Leatherborough. I'll just add that um, it was it was kind of brought to my attention that you know the sale of this of this property uh, those dollars should go back into investing in the downtown. So for for anyone looking at the agenda, there are multiple options. But um, as we've we've just talked about, lots of projects in the queue and debt and debt and debenture. It seemed uh, to me that this was. Um, priority number one for me. Thank you. Any other discussion? No, I'm just going to echo that, that I think this is probably the best way to use money immediately to see some um, savings, a future debt load on the taxpayer. And uh, it's almost a million dollars that's going to help save a lot of interest moving forward. So with that, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. That's carried. Next up, we have 14A.5, 2024 budget approval. So of course, now there's a few different ways we can go about this, and I will let council decide. I'll be asking for motions uh, moving forward. We can do individuals, or we can lump them up accordingly. So if somebody makes a motion and lumps it together and you as a counselor would like one of them pulled out, please let me know and we'll, we'll talk about that and maybe just adjust that accordingly. So with that, I will look for a motion on the floor. Who wants to start? <laughs> Told you the big decisions tonight, everybody. <laughs> I would, but I can't. So, Councillor Leatherborough. Um, yeah, well, hopefully I can speak to this right after. That the annual, so moved by myself, that the annual contribution to the asphalt resurfacing reserve be increased by 200000 to 800000 Thank you. Do I have a seconder for that?
Seeing none, then I'm looking for another motion on the floor. That's failed. Councilor Leatherborough. Perfect. Okay. Uh, moved by myself that the that an annual contribution to a new bridge reconstruction reserve in the amount of 400000 be approved. Thank you. I have a seconder. Councilor Lauder. Discussion? Councilor Tate. Uh, just through the chair, if the city engineer wants to comment on it, if we took this out, um, I believe it would have to go to the taxpayer. Your Worship. Uh, oh, sorry. Your Worship, uh, through the councillor. Yes, the bridge reconstruction reserve. Um, we're anticipating some fairly expensive projects coming up in the next few years. Um, so this is kind of a, a, a step forward to try starting to save up the money so that we're not um, hitting the taxpayer all in one go later on. Thank you. Um, Councillor Leatherborough? Sorry, just to clarify, I don't know if Councillor Tate can clarify. Um, are we talking about taking it out or no? No. Okay. Sorry. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Councillor Schadenberg. Yeah, from the mayor, I guess through to Mr. DeHaan also. Just as point of clarification, just so people know, this is not nothing to do with the uh, Van Sittert Bridge over the railway tracks and uh, the Thames River. Your worship through the council, no, that, that's the county pro county's project. Um, these, these are all this money will be all for city bridges. Okay, thank you. And for those watching at home, we're on item number two of this. To, to clarify as well. Okay. Any other comments or questions before I call the vote? Oh, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mayor Accioni. I think, um, yeah, fully supportive of this motion. I think any time that we have the opportunity to plan ahead and put money uh, aside for reserves, there's a delicate dance in this world of putting money into reserves and going to debt. And I think that uh, for me, this one uh, resonates that if we can plan ahead as much as possible, uh, it will save us down the road. So putting into reserves, I support. Yeah, thank you. Anything else before I call the vote? And I'll just say I absolutely echo Councillor Martin there. I think putting it aside, setting aside a little bit at a time is a lot less painful and hopefully kind of earn a little bit of interest on that money as well to make it even better down the road. So with that, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. So next up, looking for a motion. Councillor Lauder. Thank you. I'll move that the annual contribution to the new road reconstruction reserve in the amount of 400,000 for 2024 be approved. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Tate. Discussion? Councillor Tate? Oops. Just through the chair. This has um, been ongoing because we got way behind in our road, so we've had to keep it up. So just a comment about that. I assume that other mic isn't working. No. <laughs> All right, then it's just you. It's got to be you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, discussion? Further discussion? Councillor Lauder? Uh, uh, just uh, a comment. Uh, we can drive around our streets, and we know that they have to be we, uh, that be um, worked done on them. So I think that this is what we have to do is put more money away for this. So. I certainly approve it. Oh, we're talking about item three for those watching at home right now. Uh, nothing further, then I'll call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. Carried. Looking for another motion. Councillor Councilor Tate? I'll move that an annual contribution to the Street Lighting Reserve Fund in the amount of $50,000 be approved. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Lauder? Discussion? Councillor Tate? Oh, sorry. Councillor Leatherborough? <laughs> I'm just saying that I, I just won't support that this, this year is all, but um, happy to look at it next year. Okay. Councillor Tate? Uh, yeah, just through 
the worship, I had the same thought, but then I talked to the city engineer, so I just want, can you comment on the thing? I'm going to give his mic back. <laughs> Your worship through the counselor. Uh, yes. Um, we've just started including um, rebuild of, of the underground as part of a road reconstruction projects. So we thought that starting a reserve to help fund that in future years would, would be a good idea. Yes. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Lauder? Uh, yes, I'm in support of it. Um, as I had talked to Mr. Dahan and um, when he explained that, because originally I was thinking of removing it, but after uh, speaking with him, um, I, I do approve it. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Anyone else? I'll just say that uh, I was also of the opinion that it was an easy one to kind of pass on this year just to try to look at money until a discussion happened and realizing what we are spending and it's the same idea we're better to save a little bit every year and get that pot a little full because we know we're going to spend it so and for that reason i'm going to be in favor of this this one uh so i'll call the vote if nobody else okay call the vote all those in favor opposed that is carried Anything else under that first section before I move on? Seeing none, we are moving along. Now we're into suggested staffing related additions to base budget. So number six through to 24 section for those watching at home. Councillor Leatherboro. Uh, so number six, moving by myself that the staffing request from the administrative services department for a full-time accounting coordinator in the amount of 54,720 be approved. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Martin, discussion? Seeing none, this is one of those, in my opinion, is long overdue. Uh, when I found out how long it's been since we've added, this is long overdue. Uh, and for that, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. Carried. Looking for another motion on the floor. Councillor Schattenberg. I make a motion that the uh, staffing request for the Administrative Services Department to convert one part-time taxation clerk to a full-time taxation clerk with a net cost of 21000 be approved. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Tate. Discussion? Seeing none, I'm just going to echo exactly what I said before. Another big addition that hasn't been added for an extremely long time. Uh, and with that, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. Next up, Councillor Leatherborough. Number eight, that the staffing request from the engineering department for a full-time manager of bylaw enforcement in the amount of $62,865 be approved. Hold on, I lost my point there. And further, that 3,000 for information technology equipment be approved, sorry. As long as you're, that's what you intended to move, yes. Councillor Lauder second, I'm assuming, okay. Discussion? Councillor Leatherborough? Um, I'll just add that I do support this addition. Um, we had talked about it in the budget presentations that and if Mr. Hahn wants to chime in, the floor is yours. Uh, but th this will also help with updating our property standards, which is outdated, um, as well as assisting uh, illegal dumping, things of that nature. So I do think that this will equip a lot of um, bylaws that can can use a fresh set of eyes, as well as the signed bylaw. I think Councillor Lauder and I have both actively um, wanted to update. So um, those are my reasons for putting this forward. Okay, thank you. Councillor Tate? Yeah, just through the chair, that was one of the ones I, I looked at and I thought, oh, do we need it? And then when I had the discussion, yes, because we've hired all those bylaw people, but there's nobody actually, we don't have enough staff to oversee it. So I think it's money well spent and there are a lot of jobs that need to be done and now they will get done. I'm just going to say ditto at this time. <laughs> I agree. Yes. And uh, nothing else? Councillor Lauder? Sorry. Yep. Uh, yeah, I echo what has been said here. 
And uh, when you talked about the bylaws and we've been thinking of signed bylaws and different ones for so long and there just haven't been the time for them to get to that. So I think this would be a good enhancement to the bylaw department. Thank you. If nothing else, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. Carried. Next up, um, looking for a motion. Councillor Tate. I'll move that the staffing request from the Parks and Recreation Department for one seasonal full-time skilled labor in the amount of 40430 be approved. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Discussion? And for those watching at home, we're on number 10 right now. Any discussion or questions? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. Thank you. Looking for another motion on the floor. Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Moved by myself that the staffing request from the Parks and Recreation Department for one full-time skilled laborer, Cowan Fields, in the amount of 45100 be approved. Thank you. Do I have a seconder on that? Councillor Leatherborough. Discussion? Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Um, through the chair, just a general comment. Um, I play in two different ball leagues here in the city where we, util we utilize Cowan Fields. And um, in a conversation I had with Mr. Connors um, in the last week or so, we were just chatting about how busy Cowan Fields has become. Um, and I had a few calls last year of when tournaments were coming into town and garbage was piling up very quickly. And as I said to Mr. Connors, that's at no fault to the city when we suddenly have hundreds of people coming into a park where we don't have large garbage receptacles that we can get rid of when they're bringing in 50 to 100 pizzas. So um, I think that having this staff is really important to keep up with those. And that's new teams that are not from our community coming and playing here. And that's never a bad thing to having new people in our in our city. Yes, thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. Carried. That's number 11 for those watching at home. I don't think I mentioned that. Uh, next up, looking for a motion, Councillor Lauder. Thank you. I'll move that the staffing request from the Parks and Recreation Department to convert one part-time Cowan Park Sports Plex custodian to a full-time Cowan Park Sports Plex custodian with a net cost of 5640 be approved. Thank you. Seconder, Councillor Shattenberg, discussion? See, oh, I, yes, Councillor I, I, I approve of, of this. Um, I think that uh, anything to, uh, with a full-time person that's a regular person there, as opposed to just part-time. So I think it's required now with everything that's going on at uh, Collins Park Sportsplex. So. I, I approve this. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? None opposed. So carried. Uh, next up, looking for another motion. Councillor Tate. Move that the staffing request from Parks and Recreation Department to convert one part time arena laborer to a full time arena laborer with a net cost of 5740 be approved. Thank you. Second by Councillor Martin. Of course, those watching at home, this is item 13. Discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? None opposed. Carried. Looking for another motion. Councillor Leatherborough. Number 14, that's st that the staffing request from the Public Works Department for one full-time fleet preventative maintenance technician in the amount of $41,510 be approved. Thank you. Is there a seconder on that motion? Councillor Lauder, discussion? Councillor Lauder? Thank you. I just want to mention that uh, the police service uh, now uh, uses the, uh, the our service garage. And um, they have uh, nothing but good comments about it. They, they're really pleased that, and it has saved them some, some money. So I, I really approve this. 
Yes, I've heard the exact same thing and thankful for that. Keep it all in house as much as we can. Uh, looking for any more discussion or questions? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. Uh, looking for another motion. Councilor Tate. I'll move that the staffing request from the Public Works Department for one full time skilled labor roads in the amount of 43,710 be approved. Thank you. This is num item number 15 for those following along. Councilor Schattenberg. Discussion? Or Yes, Councillor Schattenberg. Seconded, sorry. Discussion? <laughs> you made me second guess myself. <laughs> no questions or discussion. All those in favor? None opposed. Looking for another motion. Councillor Tate? Long overdue. Uh, the staffing request from the Public Works Department for full two full-time water operators financed from Oxford County of Oxford water rates be approved. Thank you. Looking for a seconder. Councillor Martin. Discussion? Well, I'll just simply add that this is one that is paid through our water rates and is effectively on the county levy. Part of their increases allows us to have the employees for those watching. And with that, I'll call a vote. All those in favor? None opposed. Thank you. That's carried. Looking for Councillor Leatherborough. Another motion. Number 17, that the staffing request from the clerk's department for one full-time manager of legislative services in the amount of $57,275 be approved. Thank you. Do I have a seconder on that? Councillor Lauder. Discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. Thank you. Next up, Councillor Tate. Number 18, the staffing request from the Cultural Service Department for a full-time custodian to be shared by the Market Square, um, Market, sorry, Centre, West End, Woodstock Art Gallery, and Woodstock Museum with a net cost of 12500 be approved. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Martin. Discussion? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. Looking for another motion. Councillor Leatherborough. 19, that the staffing request from the Cultural Services Department for a full-time facility rentals and special events coordinator to be shared by the Market Theatre and the Woodstock Art Gallery in the amount of 33,710 be approved. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Lauder. Discussion? Councillor Leatherborough. Uh, through your worship, yeah, I just I, I would love uh, council's feedback on this. Um, I know that there are many additions, and and I do want to just get feedback if anyone feels like sharing. Just if this is something that we need now ahead of both the fourth floor coming in, as well as the theater um, does share space, uh, the calendar, if you will, with the city of Woodstock, and and we could certainly um, put this towards increasing bodies through the theater on the city of Woodstock end. So just looking for feedback. Um, on now or next year. Thank you, Councillor Lauder. Who's next? Thank you. Um, yes, I've spoke with uh, both Miss Houston and Miss Reed, and um, it's something that is they feel is required. And we have 180 days at the theater that is not being used, and it's it's up to the city. We can uh, have entertainment or do whatever there and so rental there and uh, with the art gallery on uh, the fourth floor um, hopefully being finished close to the end of this year uh, uh, then um, if we want to start renting it so we don't want to start rent start at uh, January 1st of next year uh, we have to get things in order um, when there's weddings or if there's meetings or anything that might be going on next year. Um, this gives an opportunity to, for someone to um, get make that available and um, start marketing. So that's why I will support this. Okay, thank you. Councillor Tate. Uh, just through the chair, 
I'm not supporting this one. And just because of the same comments that was um, made, we have a lot of additions we had to make this year to staff. As we know, um, the clerk's department's been 20 years since we've added any. So I just thought this one, because the budget is so large that this one could be deferred. Um, I understand the want and the need for it, but to me, this one was maybe um, could be put off a year, so I won't be supporting it. Just my thoughts. Thank you, Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Um, through the Chair General comment, just some feedback to Councillor Leatherbarrow. Um, I support this one just um, wearing my hat as a member of the uh, Theatre Woodstock Board. Um, I know that there's a lot of conversations that happen between the city and the Theatre Woodstock. And when one of the city staff was off work for a long time um, due to an injury and recovery, there was just a lot of things falling through the cracks because there's just staff not there to support that role because they're busy in other roles. So having somebody that's dedicated to this, I think is important because we have a great theater that we can utilize. And I know we're gonna have a beautiful aspect to the art gallery. And as a city that does not have a lot of space to rent out for events and activities and um, those type of um, venues, I think it's important to have someone dedicated that can also help promote that too. So I think there's kind of a two, two lens side to how we can use this, this role. Okay, thank you. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mayor Accioni. I'm fully willing to support this one. I look at this as a position that actually uh, turns around and generates revenue for the city. Uh, so you spend money to make money and um, uh, more bookings and more uh, events certainly creates that opportunity for us and is contributes to a vibrant downtown. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, then I'm just going to say that I had a tough time with this one. I, I really went back and forth thinking of the amount of asks from, from staff and, and everything else. And I don't mind admitting that it was made clear to me last night at the town hall. There was a discussion talking about driving business downtown. And it dawned on me that, you know, we're, and Sarah, I'm looking at you right now, that um, that comment kind of goes along with this position. That again, if we're going to be supporting our downtown, it's a relatively inexpensive way that will recoup a lot of that money back. And for that reason, I've actually changed my mind on this one, and I'm going to support this one because I think the the benefits outweigh the cost, and we can bring more people downtown um, for everywhere. And of course, when the fourth floor opens up, that's the bonus. With that, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Next up, looking for another motion. Councillor Tate. Uh, number 20, that the staff and request from the Cultural Service Department for one part-time art installation technician at the Woodstock Art Gallery with a zero net cost be approved. Thank you. Do I have a seconder on a net cost one? <laughs> Councillor Schattenberg. <laughs> Is there a discussion? I'll just state for the, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but for those watching at home, it's a net zero cost because of course what we've been spending on hired services to come in is gonna cost us the equivalency of what an employee does. So that's why, in case you're wondering, that's how it's a net zero cost. With that, I'll call the votes. All those in favor? Yeah, I oh, wondered that. None opposed. Carried. Looking for another motion. Councillor Lauder? I'll move that the staffing request for the Woodstock Fire Department for four suppression staff plus a portion of the required uniforms and personnel protection equipment in the amount of $204,400 be approved and further that a portion of the required uniforms and personnel protection equipment in the amount of 15,600 financed from the fire protection development charge reserve fund be approved. Thank you. Is there a seconder on that? Councillor Leatherborough, discussion? Councillor Lauder? Oh, no. Um, no, I have spoken with the chief on this and explained why that they um, they require this uh, additional staffing and um, 
I um, approve it. Simple enough. Uh, any other discussion? Councillor Tate. Yeah, just this one. I'd like a recorded vote just for the benefit of the. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Or questions, of course, the staff. Seeing none, I will admit this is another one. Um, I, I kept weighing back and forth, back and forth, looking at cost versus benefits and it's no secret um, you know all our first responders come with a significant cost but a very significant importance so when we're looking at where do we spend money and everything else of course first responders seem to you know climb up there as some of the most expensive additions but again for valid reasons so uh, with that I'm going to call the vote or sorry, the clerk is going to call the vote. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. That motion was moved by Councillor Lauder. So we'll start with you, Councillor Lauder. Yes. Councillor Leatherbarrow. Yes. Councillor Martin. No. Councillor Schattenberg. Yes. Councillor Tate. Yes. Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Yes. And Mayor Accioni. Yes. That motion carries six to one. Great, thank you. Next up we have, or looking for a motion, sorry, I shouldn't assume. Councillor Leatherborough. I'm saying the numbers for my own benefit. 22, that the staffing request from the information technology department for one full-time service desk analyst in the amount of $45,825 be approved. Thank you. Do I have a seconder on that motion? Councillor Tate. Discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. Looking for another motion? Councillor Schattenberg. That the staffing request from the Human Resources Department for one health and safety summer student with a zero net cost be approved. Thank you. And for those watching, this is number 23. We have a seconder on that. Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Looking for a motion, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mayor Accioni. Item number 24, that the staffing request from the Woodstock Public Library for one full-time technical services, services supervisor in the amount of 68,275 be approved. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Schattenberg, discussion? Councillor Schattenberg. Yeah, not sure if the uh, CAO or the person would best be to, to answer the, the question, but really, in, in, in actual fact, the Woodstock Public Library, therefore, be hiring somebody to be a City of Woodstock employee instead of hiring somebody from an outside firm, just to clarify. In your worship, your worship through to Councillor Schadenberg, that's actually a different uh, um, addition to base budget proposal. This would be to increase the staff complement of the Woodstock Public Library staff itself, not related to the information technology transfer of service. That will be coming soon. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. Next up, we get to the suggested miscellaneous additions to base budget. Councillor Leatherborough. 25, that fees for the use of the Southside Aquatic Center waiting pool and the amount of 22,000 be waived for 2024. Thank you, a seconder. Councillor Tate, discussion. Councillor Leatherborough. Um, yeah, I would just like to add that um, 
like everything else, looked at it, was just had a few questions and, and um, reached out to staff. So Mr. Connors, thanks for answering my questions that I always have. Um, but I do think that this is going to be great for um, everyone that is splish slashing this summer. Um, I think it'll be, if the schedule construction schedule serves me right, I think it could be potentially the last summer as well. So for consistency, uh, the city of Woodstock residents and those coming into the city will uh, benefit from having it free last summer and this summer. So that's why I felt it was best to uh, put this forward. Thank you. Any further discussion? Call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. Next up, what would we like to move? Looking for a motion. Councillor Leatherborough. That the request of the Economic Development Department Physician Recruitment for Academic Supports Programs, including student scholarships and pre preceptor uh, stipends in the amount of 14000 be approved. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Councillor Lauder. Discussion? Or questions? Councillor Leatherworm. Again, I'm really on the fence with this one. I know it's uh, smaller compared to to other additions to base budget. Uh, Christy Hahn does Hans does a phenomenal job, um, and Gray gave a very informative presentation with the challenges that uh, the city of Woodstock and lots of municipalities are um, facing. So, um, in terms of recruiting family physicians, um, and that it's few and far between for those that are getting into the family physician game, if we could call it that. So. Um, again, looking for any feedback from colleagues if they'd like to share. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Lauder. Uh, yes, I certainly support this. And uh, I echo what uh, Councillor Leatherborough has said, that uh, the presentation we received explained uh, how important this is for our municipality. It is happening in other municipalities that they're doing this, and if not more money. So I think that this is a start, and um, I, uh, I agree with this, this motion. Thank you. Anything further? Seeing none, I'll just simply comment that uh, Ms. Hans is doing everything she can. I truly believe that. And again, we need to give whatever tools. She is an expert in this field. She feels she needs us to help attract more. We need more doctors, there's no question. So hopefully this helps another tool in the toolbox. And with that, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. Looking for another motion. Councillor Wismer Van Meer. My number 27, that the request of city clerk's department for software to manage freedom of information request in the amount $11,000 be approved. Thank you, is there a seconder? Councillor Tate, discussion? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. Looking for another motion. Councillor Lauder. I'll move that the request for the communications and marketing division for one summer student for preparatory work related to the 2025 website and microsite refresh in the amount of 15000 be approved. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Councillor Tate, discussion? Seeing none, move along. All those in favor? Opposed? None. Looking for another motion. Councillor Tate. I'll move 29 that council approve the purchase of office furnishings to facilitate the relocation of the economic development department from city hall to the west end of the market building in the amount of 70,000. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Councillor Leatherborough. Discussion? Seeing none, I'm simply going to add that, of course, um, for those that don't know, We've been doing renovations and everything over at Market Center. It's nearing completion and looking to get some furniture in there. So with that, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. Next up, we have suggested service level improvements to base budget. Looking for a motion. Councillor Leatherborough. 
Number 30, that the staffing request from the Parks and Recreation Department for two full-time skilled laborers for encampment response at a net cost of 90400 be approved. And further, that council approve the purchase of a new vehicle with a slide dump box at a cost of 200000 And further, that council approve the purchase of a trail electric utility vehicle at the cost of 30000 And further, that council approve additional expenditures for communications equipment, personal protective equipment, training, and waste management in the amount of 26000 Thank you. Is there a seconder on that? Councillor Martin, discussion? Councillor Leatherborough? Um, this one I'm super, super torn about. Um, I know it is very heavy front ended. So again, I am coming to my colleagues to truthfully get your opinion. Obviously, if you support or against, that's fine. The reason I am up in the air with it is this was created through the mayor's task force, which is an annual funding of 150,000 from the OLG revenue fund. So from, from the revenue of the OLG slots. Um, the task force as it stands, because it was just one year, can, can pick its direction each year. So this coming year, we haven't quite picked a direction yet, um, but what was identified as soon as we got going was an encampment response. And this uh, position and work has certainly come from that task force direction. Now, aside from the work itself, which I'm happy to get into, but I'm really wanting to talk about the dollar amount. So if you go to page 56 from our revenue fund budget, unless you've already looked at it, but under parks cleanup uh, par purchase services. So 2023 revenue budget, it was originally budgeted for 10,000. The task force kicked in 50,000. And then the year to date was $89,621.77. So I understand that if... For 2024, it's looking at starting out at 50,000, so increasing that, and there's potential to just increase that and continue to outsource that service. But unfortunately, um, people experiencing homelessness and living in encampments in the city of Woodstock is not going anywhere anytime soon. And as a matter of fact, if I, and I may be incorrect, but I believe the shelter just got its additional beds, which was originally supposed to be last fall and now end of March, um, which I'm not you know, wagging my finger at anybody. I'm just saying that, you know, the idea of moving people along and taking down encampments, things of that, you have to provide housing and, and shelter and all of those things in order to even start that process. So back to the dollar amount, what happens if in 2024, the year today comes back, um, say we, we top it up to be more than 50,000. What if it comes back at 100,000 or 120,000? I don't know if the task force is, ready to to give more money this year what if we pick a direction of food insecurity um that money goes very quickly i think we've learned so in, in terms of the best bang for your buck to do this work and to keep it in house to support parks we we do know that parks is never short of work um i did ask staff that this would also help with illegal dumping as well as the uptick in vandalism so i i am looking for feedback in the sense of could we defer it till next year? Should we do it now? Because in the long run, it is definitely being proactive and it could save taxpayers money. Um, so I am looking for feedback because I, I'm just not sure how to fall on this one. Thank you. Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Uh, through the chair, um, I'm not going to support this motion based on just a couple of items. One, it's a really large item on the budget. Um, and I am on that mayor's task force as well. I had conversations with Mr. Connors as well, some other staff members. Um, the need is definitely there. I'm not denying that. But I think for me right now, I would rather increase the budget line closer to 90,000, 100,000, whatever you know we think it's gonna work. Really take this year to digest how this is working, have staff come back to us with a report on how dollars are spent, staffing is spent, so that way we have a really full picture of this and coming for 2025. If we see that this is what we're allotting is not working, then yes, we we need to seriously look at this option. I would really like to take this next year to have these numbers really presented to us and broken down so that we can make that decision properly knowing that these funds are going to be going at this needed at this time 
I'm more comfortable with taking more money to the base budget, putting some more money into that than taking this entire jump in at this point. Okay, thank you. Councillor Tate. Through the chair, I also won't support the motion. Um, I know Councillor Wismer Van Meer put a lot of work into this and she's got a suggested motion if this one fails. And I know she talked to an expert in the field and um, I'm quite comfortable. I also, the same comments as Councillor Wismer Van Meer, I was uncomfortable with the um, capital cost and the large amount that this was gonna be in this budget year because the budget is so high. So um, I agree with all your comments and she did put a lot of work into this. So I, I, if this fails, I will be supporting her other motion. Thank you, Councillor Lauder. Thank you. Um, I also will um, be supporting, or would support uh, Councillor uh, Wismer Van Meer on her suggestion. Um, I have the same uh, concerns with, with the cat, the capital amount on there, and I would like to see um, it come back next year. And I would uh, I go along with um, increasing the parks cleanup um, purchase service to a hundred thousand of ninety or whatever I know in the resolution that she has put has uh, suggested it's ninety thousand. I would even go to a hundred thousand, but I would like to see that put off until next year. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? And I'll just simply say that uh, this is another one of those that I've been really flip-flopping a lot about. Um, and ult ultimately, it was like, I'd rather spend $100,000 on staff um, that aren't here just a few times a year and are here year-round because we have things like 40 other acres of parkland coming into play. And there is some dumping and, and everything else. Um, Again, these are some tough decisions we're all making when you look at any additions. And the task force, I believe, has done fantastic. And I thank my fellow councillors, but also all of council, because again, we put forward anything to be approved on that. And encampments were certainly highlighted as the one of the largest uh, needs of the city last year. And I think we've addressed them very, very well. Uh, are things perfect? Absolutely not. Do I wish they were better? 100%. And I thought maybe this motion would be something that would be better that we can control in house and uh, address situations quickly instead of waiting on a third party. But um, with that, we'll call oh, Councillor Leatherborough. Thank you, Mary Atrioni. I just wanted to get your feedback too. So thank you to everybody that uh, shared their points of view. Um, I will be supporting the motion. Um, because I'm also concerned about staff time, right? I mean, I know through the budget we see uh, wages and things like that, but I do get fearful that while we're trying to contract this out, um, that also takes staff time of getting hold of people, connecting, emailing, all of those kinds of things. So I am cognizant of all of those other projects. Um, we have talked a lot about in this budget, not preparing in the past, not that it's necessarily anyone's individual issue. I'm just saying that uh, I really wanna get to a proactive space and especially when we're talking about um, something so critical in, in communities across the province and the country for that matter, unfortunately. So just wanna acknowledge staff time. Um, and even if we move forward with uh, Councillor Wismer Van Meer's motion, or if that's what it goes for it, I should say, um, for the community, especially in the gallery, like the work that is being done through the city of Woodstock, there's a combination of public works, there's a combination of fire, there's social agencies, the, there's the mobile health bus operation sharing, there's lots of people actually working together. And um, my opinion is that there is not overlapping. There is an effort to make sure that um, everyone is working together, not double dipping, overlapping, stepping on one, on one another. So I do think that this has still been a terrific result of the task force. And um, for that, I will be supporting this motion. Thank you. Any further comments or questions to staff before I call the vote? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion is not carried. So looking for a new motion, Councillor Wismer Van Meer. I move that account 0701 8312503 Parks Cleanup Purchase Services 
be increased uh, by additional 50,000 to a total of 100,000. Originally, I had talked about 40, but just listening to what Councillor Lauder has said and also looking at some numbers, I think um, going up to that 50,000, um, giving it a little bit of wiggle room is still a good option to go with. Okay, thank you. Is there a seconder on that motion? Councillor Lauder, discussion. Seeing none, then I'm just going to comment. I certainly will vote in favor of this because we do need to address more money allocated for this. It's unfortunate, but due to circumstance, I certainly understand where council is coming from about hesit hesitancy. I'm sorry about uh, spending even more money and everything else. So with that, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? None, of, none opposed. Carried. Next up, looking for another motion on the floor. Councillor Martin. Thank you. Item number 31, that the joint request for the Information Technology Department and the Woodstock Public Library to share an Information Technology staff resource on a 30-70% basis, respectively, uh, at an increased cost to the Woodstock Public Library of 65000 and a reduced cost to the Information Technology Department of 85000 in 2024 be approved, and further that the request for the Information Technology Department for an Information Technology Service Desk Analyst in the amount of 60000 be approved. Thank you. Is there a seconder on the motion? Councillor Tate, discussion? Councillor Martin. Yeah, I'll just say that as a member of the library board, uh, this is certainly much needed. Uh, the, the resources, we see communities all around us uh, deal with and face cyber attacks on a regular basis. We all constantly need to be vigilant and uh, um, it's time for us to put some more staffing resources to ensure that we are always ready for day-to-day -day operations, but uh, to, you know, in a protective measure. Yes, I agree. Well, well said. Um, anyone else? Councilor Schattenberg. Yeah, I guess I uh, see clarification on the second half because number 22 also mentioned the information technology service desk analyst. It was a different amount, but this time it's in the amount of 60,000 to be approved. I just want a, a clarification as to all those two positions are different. Through to the CAO. Your worship, through to Councilor Schattenberg. There were two separate uh, uh, positions that were requested. There was one uh, one additional staff requested, and then a second one requested to um, backfill as a, as a result of the support that's being assigned to the Woodstock Public Library system. That sound good? Anyone else? Nope. Want to turn your mic off then? I just don't know if you're asking thank you <laughs> don't want to ignore you uh, and seeing nothing else i'll call the vote all those in favor none opposed that is carried looking for another motion councillor leatherborough so as we segue into transit um, i'm going to hop over to my motion or no uh, motion that's under my name so 34 that council approve improvement improvements to transit paratransit service effective july 2024 by increasing monday to friday service by two hours to provide service from 5 a.m to 11 p.m and by an addition of nine new hours on sundays and by the addition of regular weekday service on easter monday in bracket beginning in 2025 um, at a cost of 173,500. Thank you. Is there a seconder on that motion? Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Would you like to speak to that, Councillor Leatherborough? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So this one was, I have told a few of my colleagues that I just had to put pen to paper to actually visualize what I was thinking of based on um, community feedback. Um, and as it was listed for the public's knowledge, there was a couple different options. So I really just wanted to put pen to paper to see what it looked like. I am receptive to not only feedback, but amendments should there be any. Um, 
but certainly what I heard was between Monday to Friday to extend the hours by two hours, uh, 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. That will allow um, earlier starts, but definitely heard about auto workers wanting to get um, use transit to get to work. So helping with the local economy and then Sunday service. Um, I, I, I think that Sunday service, it, it would be great to see starting out at nine hours. I think that there's a lot of people that go shopping. Again, I've heard from parents, their youth, either working at the aquatic center on Sunday, trying to get back and forth. The nine hours allows for, again, that consistency of every half hour where there was an option for 14 hours, but that would have been once every hour, which I thought could be a little bit more confusing. Um, so Easter Monday was also identified. I'm not sure if Councillor Wismer Van Meer will speak to Easter Monday, but that's where I got that from. So again, I do think that um, increasing public transit is is not only great for, for many ways of, of the environment, but quite truthfully, it does help with, I know how expensive the cost of living is and for people to get around the city and with the city growing, I certainly hear a lot of people want other affordable means to get around in the city of Woodstock, specifically to employment. Um, and I forgot one note where on Sundays as well, seniors uh, attending faith-based uh, commitments. So those are my thoughts as to why I put this together. Thank you, Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Uh, through the chair, just a general comment as well. Um, as Councillor Leatherbarrow mentioned, there are people that are relying on transit for our manufacturing sector. And I mean, it doesn't take much to look and see how much that uh, sector has grown within our community. Um, I actually received some comments, about four or five emails after that last uh, budget presentation, uh, well, when transit was presented from all single women that live within the community that work until at least 10 o'clock. And they were commenting on the fact that they don't own a vehicle um, and they rely on taxi service to get home, which starts to become costly for them. And they would, um, they were requesting till midnight, which I very much said, I, I, that was a little bit, that was a bit too much I thought to, to try to justify midnight and a weeknight. But um, there are people that, people that are relying on this um, to, to get to and from work in a safe manner. So um, in Easter Monday, I, that's an pretty much an operational day for every for most folks out there. And to me, I think that transit should be running. So if this motion does not pass, I'm still hoping that Easter Monday service is going to be implemented at some capacity um, along the way. Just for council, we're just trying to figure out the numbers actually. Mr. Curry? Uh, yes, Your Worship, if you... Um... Council can just uh, give us a moment. We're we're trying to. We believe we have a bad number um, for this mix of options. Um, so if you could could well continue on, and uh, uh, we'll work in the background here. You want to take a break? Is that okay to take a break while the motion's on the floor? Okay. Why don't we? Yes. Say a ten-minute recess is more than enough, probably. Yeah, if if there's unanimous consent from council, we can take a ten-minute break. Yes. Anyone opposed? Seeing none, we're going to take a ten-minute break. Everybody, thank you.
for that. So there, uh, we will need a friendly amendment on the motion on the floor right now. Uh, thank you to the CAO and the and uh, Diane, of course, for catching. I'm not exactly sure who caught it, but it was caught. Uh, instead of the $173,500, which is the Sunday only portion, the total cost on the motion, the way it's read right now, would be $327,000. That is for six months. That is for the rest of 2024. Okay. So with that, I'm going to look for comments or the seconder comfortable still moving with that. And I apologize, I didn't write who seconded that. So are you comfortable with that? Yeah, to, I mean to continue to question at least, yes. Discussion, sorry, Councillor Leatherborough, I should have gone to you first. You're okay with that? With a new addition, we're okay on the seconder. So at that point, we'll keep discussion going uh, with a clarification of the dollar amount. Discussions, Councillor Tate. I won't be supporting the additions. Oops. Sorry. I will not be supporting the addition. So that would be 650000 for the year, right? So with transit, the way I, so I looked at the numbers. So this year, the budget was $1.225 million in revenue, 4.147920 in expenses for a total net cost of $2.9 million. So I figured out the cost, the number of the riders and the cost and take off the fare. So already we are subsidizing $6.55 per rider. Um, so I cannot put this on the taxpayer this year. Maybe when we have the industrial is up and built and we have that revenue coming in that assessment, but I cannot put this on the taxpayer, especially this year. Um, I understand, you know, some people needing it, but right now with the numbers we have, the way it works out, there's like five people, a bus from the numbers that we have now. So I cannot do this uh, this year. Okay, thank you, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mayor Accioni. Um, so for me, the priority is the Sunday service, um, which would come in at a, a different cost. Um, and whether that's a separate motion and we discuss that in more depth. Um, if I recall during the presentation, uh, Mr. DeHaan, Director DeHaan, you indicated that part of this was to ensure some job security that we uh, can move some bus drivers from part-time to full-time uh, and that helps to reduce the amount of turnover rate that we have in these positions. Um, so from a, co from a costing and benefit perspective, uh, can you weigh in on what added hours, you know, what is the cost of turnover uh, versus subsidized ride, which I completely understand, um, you know, has, has a cost to, to the resident, but there is an unmeasured cost to turnover. Your Worship, through to the counselor. Um, I think you kind of answered my question right with your last statement saying it's unmeasured. And so I can't give you an exact dollar dollar figure. What I can tell you though, is um, every time we hire transit operators and that's multiple times a year, we basically have a permanent posting up. We hire them in groups of three or four generally. Um, and they go through basically three full weeks of full-time training. So that's 120 hours right there of, of training before they even hit the road and allowed to drive by themselves. Um, that, you know, that doesn't even include the HR time spent for posting the projects, interviewing time and, and all the other stuff. So yes, um, we would like to see a more reliable workforce and all the options um, include a conversion of part-time positions into full-time positions. No matter what council decides, we are planning on, on, on converting as many as we can um, into full-time positions in order that to make Woodstock a more desirable employer. Thank you. Any other discussion or questions of staff? Councillor Lauder. Yeah, sorry. Um, I won't be. I will not be supporting uh, this motion. I checked with um, Brantford and Stratford and St. Thomas, and uh, none of those cities start at five o'clock. Um, in the morning, and um, in St. Thomas, they start the 
when they start at six o'clock, it's on demand is what I'm reading and they're scheduling. And, um, and then, uh, it, and that's on demand. So, and in the evenings, there's times when it's also on demand service. So um, we've added so much staff this year and I just don't feel that this is the year to be adding this kind of um, hours and amount to the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Leatherborough. Um, I just wanted to clarify that again, I just wrote this so I could visualize everything all in and it's too bad that number didn't go lower. Um, so I have a couple of questions for Mr. DeHaan and a few of which I already uh, volleyed earlier, but one that I didn't. So first and foremost, these additions came forward because it was indicated that the ridership was at an all time high, correct? Your worship through council, that is correct. And if I can continue, Mr. Mayor. And so to that, when we're talking about um, if there was to be an increase that passed the council, it's, it's trying to figure out where that is. Like if, if Councillor Lauder has indicated that 5 a.m. might be too early right now, should we be looking at those two hours early on Saturday mornings to then provide people an earlier start to work on Saturdays? I mean, if money wasn't an object, I really do believe that you could add a lot of these additions to the city of Woodstock because people are reliant on transit and that's reflective in the ridership. So I guess my question is with your point about creating more full-time positions rather than part-time and high turnover and being a desirable employer, would it make sense to, to start off by, by spreading, having an earlier start on Saturday mornings that would be more consistent with what we have right now, the Monday to Friday? Your worship through the councillor. Um, in an ideal world, I think staff would like to see Saturday hours be the same as the Monday through Friday hours. So both starting and ending at um, the same time. Um, however, if, if, if council doesn't wish to extend Saturday hours um, to do that, um, I suspect that the, the, the factories or the factory workers who work on Saturday would prefer the five o'clock start. Um, if, but yeah, it's it's kind of catching me off guard a little bit. Yeah, okay. You know, left off the hook there. Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Um, through the chair. I mean, more more. I guess a general comment and uh, just kind of um adding to what Councillor Lauder was talking about. Um, I understand that some of other communities may not start at five a.m., but not all communities have the same um, amenities in the same, you know, sectors. I mean, we have such a heavy manufacturing sector. When when Toyota came to town, so did a lot of other companies. And, um, you know, Ford's not at St. Thomas anymore. And those have slowly but surely gone away. So, um, you know, it's, all, it's not always easy to compare municipalities in that way. So that would be my only argument, not to say that I don't agree with Councillor Lauder and the fact that it is a big ask and, you know, we have a big budget no matter what way we look at it, but um, it's just, we really have a big manufacturing sector within our community. And um, there are a good number of folks that do rely on transit for that purpose. Sorry, I'm up here thinking myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, looking for any other comments or questions. See, oh, Councillor Martin. Sorry, just a thought that I guess I wanted to add to my comment about uh, why Sunday service is so important to me. Um, you know, we've we've talked about downtown revitalization. We've talked about bringing people into a vibrant core. Um, I that is one of the reasons why Sunday is is important to me. It doesn't just get people out; it gets people back in towards the uh, the depot. So I guess that's just wanted to add that thought to my uh, earlier comment. Thank you. Anyone else, Councillor Tate? Uh, through the chair, I'm just going to ask the city engineer the question for cost effectiveness. So if we just increased two hours on Saturday to start at six to 10, so it's the same as the rest of the schedule all week. Um, the cost would be minimal, but we would be able to convert 
from part-time to full-time the question your worship through the counselor that is correct um we looked at all these options individually and all of them um change or involve a change in the complement of, of full-time and part-time drivers thank you councillor leatherborough if i have a another option that's not on this paper if this fails can i ask staff about that or i have to move another motion yeah, well, we have a motion on the floor right now, so we have to wait to see what happens with it. If it's not successful, then of course I'll be looking for another motion to discuss. And then we'll take the time needed to, until council is satisfied with enough information to make a decision. And with that, I guess I got to decide in my head which way. I, I was torn on this one. I, I, I was kind of, I was kind of excited that I finally decided for the money for you know, $350,000 a year, thinking of the annual cost, not just part cost. I, I tucked myself into it. Now that we double that number, boy, oh boy, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm having a tough time here. And that's purely because of all the other, everything else. And this whole entire budget has been so much to chew on and get behind and, I would love us to have more hours, but at the end of the day, uh, the, 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 we've all got taxes to pay and, and recognizing that most of the population, unfortunately, doesn't ride the buses, um, but those that do really, really need the service. So that's where that, it, it's such a tough one in my heart right now of which way to go. Um, and now I'm just, thinking out loud and I apologize to everybody. Um, and I, I think ultimately I've got to make a decision and I don't think I will support this due to the cost at this time. I, I unfortunate, but I guess that's where I've got to go to. That's what my gut and head together say. So with that, if there's nothing else, I'll call a vote. All those in favor. You really made that that hard on me <laughs> and no one else is going to agree with it. All right. Opposed. All right. That, that motion fails. So looking for a new motion on the floor. Councillor Leatherborough. If you'd like to ask a question, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So as long as council's okay with this, let's, let's have a conversation here. Councilor Leatherborough, what are you considering? We'll, we'll, and we'll get some input if needed. Yeah. So I was, I was going to go back to, um, to the previous page. So C says add nine new hours on Sundays and statutory holidays at a cost of 195,500, but I have statutory holidays crossed out. So what I'm trying to do is still couple that two hours start in the morning on Saturdays and still seeing if there's an appetite to have nine hours on Sundays. So unfortunately, right now I don't have that motion in writing in front of me, so that's where I'm unfortunately looking, or the so numbers. Just, yeah, the two hours, so clarify. with what Mr. DeHaan just said, the two hours on Saturday mornings, so it aligns with Monday to Friday, um, and then the Sunday nine hours. How about Easter Monday? Is that still part of the discussion? The clerk's just trying to. I think Easter Monday is, together. but my understanding was that that wouldn't be reflected until the next year's budget because Easter Sunday, Monday is 11 days away. So it won't be happening in 2024, but it was written originally in my motion to identify that that would be an added service in 2025. I think for transparency and budget and planning and everything else for the sake of one day I would suggest if there is going to be an intent to include that we include it now no, recognizing of course it's not till 2025 would be my recommendation 
Sure. If um, council is comfortable with the idea that Councillor Leatherborough just threw out there, the clerk does have a motion she could read to try to reflect that. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. So that council approve improvements to transit paratransit service effective July 2024 by increasing Saturday service by two hours to provide service from 6 a.m. till 10 p.m. and by an addition of nine hours on Sundays and by the addition of regular weekday service on Easter Monday beginning in 2025. At a cost of? Question mark. 231000 just to clarify, for half a year, for the six months of 2024. Okay. Is that what you intended? Okay. Now, look, uh, if that's going to be your motion, that is your motion moved by Councillor Leatherborough. Is there a seconder on that motion as it's read? Councillor Martin. Discussion. Councillor Tate. So I can't support that because it's going to be almost half a million dollars uh, next year. And with this budget, like I said, I, I can't do it. Um, once we get that industrial base, it'll make a big difference, but we don't have it. And I just, I can't see putting it on the tax base with all the other increase. I can see doing the two hours on Saturday, <clears throat> excuse me, because it would help convert some of the part-time to the full-time and fix the obviously the problem that we've got retaining but other than that I can't spend the money okay thank you any other discussion or questions Councillor Lauder I also w won't support uh, this one again it's like 231,000 and and then uh, uh, for a full year it's Four hundred and well, it could be up to fifty thousand or five hundred thousand for extra play. So um, uh, no, I won't be supporting. I could support the two hours on Saturday, if that's giving some people full time positions, and the need is there. So, uh, but I won't support it as it is. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion or questions? So again, I got to decide, don't I? <laughs> Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Uh, through the chair, um, I think that I'm actually going to vote against this only because I think, uh, to me, the Monday to Friday, those hours were more of an importance to me. I thought. Um, however, I do also agree with the Saturday the consistency of getting some full time. I still want to see Easter Monday added in there, though. So um, that would be where I would be leaning towards. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, I think I'm going to echo Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Um, again, the idea, I, I kind of convinced myself at the 173,000, uh, roughly. I had to do a, a tough job on that to justify the costs to the tax levy these days. Um, Though I'd love to see those additional hours, I'm I'm still not convinced for the money. There's there's enough there, so for that reason, I will not support this motion. Unfortunately, myself. Um, with that, any other discussion? Councillor Schadenberg. I guess just as a point of reference, I have a question for uh, Mr. Gahan. Does the buses go anywhere further east now than uh, Thomas Parker? Or Arthur Parker? Yeah, your, your worship, through the counselor. Um, oh, that's about where they stop and swing around. We have, I have had some discussion with uh, the transit supervisor ex about extending the routes further east. Um, he's been pushing me for it. I've been a little hesitant on it because of the bridge construction. I thought it would slow things down too much. So it's my fault. Councillor Schadenberg. I guess because everyone's been stating sort of where their stand is on it, I would I would agree uh, to 5 a.m. start weekdays because so many factories open at 6. 
but uh, not agree to anything on Sunday. So I think there, we got seven different opinions on seven people around the room. And just think you guys can come on council too and try to make these tough decisions. It's <laughs> a lot to chew on here. Um, so looking for any other comments or questions before I have to call the vote. <laughs> Unless we're ready. Any other comments or questions? All right, seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Uh, motion is not carried. So looking for another motion on the floor. Councillor Tate. So I'll try this one. Uh, increase service by two hours on Saturday to provide service from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Easter Monday because I don't know the cost. So how much? So that would be the total for the year? Okay. So increase service by two hours on Saturday to provide service from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. at a cost of would be 115045 for the year, so 57522.50. Does that include Easter Monday? Yep, through the director of talks to include it, but there's no cost for this year. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. <laughs> so what was that number again? Sorry. Uh, Fifty-seven five. Fifty-seven five. The 57.5 would not include Easter Monday, but we can include it in the motion for that next year for budgeting and planning. It'll be there, but it will be an additional cost of the day, just to be clear. A base budget will become part of base budget, correct? Yes, still, yeah, July 1st, is that what you just asked? Effective July 1st is what the motion is for right now. So, um, do we have a seconder? Yeah, sorry. I'm trying to get my head around all this. Looking for a seconder on the motion on the floor. Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Discussion. Councillor Tate. Not that I want to increase transit whatsoever because of the cost, but I think the cost of um, the staffing turnover would more than make up the 57000 or the 115000 I'm comfortable with that. Um, but that's just about my limit. That's it. Okay, thank you. Councillor Leatherborough. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And I'll just say, if money wasn't an object, I am opposite of that, where I would love to invest in all of the transit. Um, but I do think that I will support this. It sounds like it will go through. And I do think as we move along in years to come, that additions to transit is really important to a lot of residents. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mayor Accioni. Um, Yes, I, I, I would concur that I would, if money was no object, I'd love to add in more features. But money is a huge object this year. Um, and so I support this. I'm glad that we can have an open and candid discussion to get us to this point um, and, and be honest with each other. And uh, so I, I'll, I'll definitely support this one. And let's see some incremental improvements as we go uh, at, a, at a cost that is not extremely painful to each and every resident. Thank you. Councillor Lauder. Thank you. Um, I too will support it. And I think that uh, in a couple of years, we're going to be looking at uh, having to uh, have bus service out into all the new area that's going to be developed and that the land is sold and, uh, ho and uh, hopefully there'll be lots of manufacturing or businesses going out there that, and they'll be ready to be built if they're sold. And also the uh, area in the north east is uh, building up quickly and uh, so um, we'll look at this again next year but um, I 
will go along with this motion. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Councillor Tate. Yeah, just a final comment. And I think, as I keep saying, once the industrial gets built and we've got the um, assessment from that, I think you can get your bus service with more hours and the days uh, be a lot easier, more affordable for the tax base. But I think until we get that, that's, that's the problem. I think everybody would like to extend the hours. It's just the cost. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? But no, um, I, I will definitely support this. I think we have to keep moving forward. I think that's the most important here is we have to continue adding services. We're a growing city. The growing, the need is there. It, it's it's there. I really wanted to see Sunday services. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm really disappointed myself um, that I had to make that that call based on money because I would have loved to have seen that. But again, the, the financial burden on the taxpayer, I guess, is just that high that we really have to make these tough decisions, even though we know we'd love to see it. For, so for that reason, I'll certainly uh, approve this for the sake of moving forward, at least adding services and apologize to those that um, we're hoping for a little bit more, maybe. And if nothing further, I'll call a vote. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Just want to make sure the clerk, you've got everything need. We're good with that. I know we bounced around a lot, so I want to make sure. Procedurally, we're fine. Okay. Um, where are we? Uh, so next up, motion by council. Councillor Leatherboro. Um, moved by myself that council approve a one-time transfer from the cannabis legalization reserve in the amount of 68409 to offset the increasing cost of policing. Thank you. Is there a seconder on that motion? Councillor Martin? Councillor Leatherborough? Discussion? The worst time to put a mint in my mouth. I apologize. Um, I did send the kind of history behind this um, funds back in, or, or sorry, earlier this week that um, Treasury sent me. So thank you very much for that. It was before my arrival on council. So if you go to the press release that I sent to you, which is on the from the Ontario government, just one clip it as to explaining why it says increasing in cost of policing, which um, has happened across a lot of municipalities. But the reason the language is like that is just in on, this is quoted from 2019, Ontario is investing 3.06 million this year to help with enhanced enforcement through provincial joint forces, cannabis enforcement teams led by the Ontario Provincial Police. This is an addition to a targeted investment of 200,000 to the Toronto Police Service to support their efforts in combating illegal cannabis operations in the city of Toronto. So identifying that it says Toronto Police Service, but I did do my due diligence to comb through a lot of reserves and um, However, this this is written, although it was reflected that it is to to um, speak to policing and and illegal cannabis. Um, that's why it was written that way. But um, it is money sitting there that is not being used since 2019, although small. But it is something to put against this budget. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion or questions, Councillor Martin? Thank you, Mayor Atchone. I did have a question for our members who do sit on the police board. Has this ever been looked at? Have you ever looked at this reserve? Has it come up in conversation as um, something that you've looked at using? Or uh, if you're even allowed to share that with us, I don't even know what you can share or not share. Uh, I don't mind. I don't think there's anything wrong in saying I didn't know this was there. Uh, to be blunt, to be truthful, uh, I was not familiar with that until Councillor Leatherborough did send that out and I thank her for that. If it's uh, money that's set aside, again, looking at the financial burden uh, at this, this whole budget is to everyone, if there's some way even big or small to offset it, which we've done all night, this is just one of those little small ones we can kind of use to put it towards in general and, and try to get the taxes down for everybody any way we can. So uh, I'm certainly in favor of this and we'll be voting in favor of it. Yeah, thank you. Any other discussion? Councillor Lauder? Um, and I too was not aware of it. And um, 
I'm not so sure. I don't think probably the police department is aware of it either. Um, they they wouldn't know what uh, maybe that this reserve is here. I don't know if they get that information. Um, if so, um, I certainly was not aware of it. So, thank you, Councillor Tate. Yeah, just through the sorry, just through the chair. Can the CAO comment on that? Because I think the money went to the city, did it not? To our reserve. So I don't know how the police services board would know about it. Your Worship, through Councillor Tate, that is correct. It came to the city at the time that council agreed to opt in and allow. Uh, cannabis retail just through the chair then i don't think the police services board could direct us to take it and put it towards anything is that not correct i mean we can because it's our money yes yeah okay yeah so uh, in reference to what councillor state if there, anybody's watching it it came to the city so we can decide as a council how to spend that money it's separate from the police board in my opinion so it is separate yes so any other further discussions or questions seeing none i'll call the vote all those in favor none opposed that carries again i will thank councilor leatherborough on that one for finding that because again i didn't know it was there uh, i guess now i'm looking for a motion related to the final approval of the budget. Yes. We... We're just letting them do the math. Sorry, everyone. Feel special right now with something in my hand. No, not really. Okay, well, thanks, staff, of course, to putting that all together so quickly because really we went through a lot of stuff tonight. Uh, so, what this is this is a 9.25% tax levy increase over 2023. So the tax rate, if we look at the growth, will be 7.42% increase. So the tax rate increase is 7.42% will be the impact on the residents for what everything we move tonight, okay? Which is going to be uh, based on the average home is $207.16. $207.16 will be the average homeowner, the average house, sorry. Okay, uh, question, Councillor Tate. Can I just have um, Treasury tell me how much that streetscape, um, what it is alone for the 2.7 million, what it, what it is? Your Worship, through to the Council's question, that's actually not going to impact the 2024 budget because by the time the work is done, the debenture will be issued in 25 at the earliest. What if it was done this year, though? Um, 
you still don't issue it? We, we typically won't issue a debenture until the work is finished. So by the time we issue the debenture, there won't be a repayment due. Are you looking for the interest? Like Are, you want to know the no, interest? No, I was, right? no, out of the, the $207, I just wondered what yeah, that was. Yeah, your worship, through the council's question, there's no impact on, on that. Okay. Any other questions of staff at this point then? Now that we have the, the number 7.42% is a tax rate increase at the average homeowner will be, or average house, 207,000 and six, sorry, long night. Two hundred and seven dollars and sixteen cents. Yes. Uh, through your worship. Yes, Councilor um, Tate. So, what will be the total with the um, county portion? Uh, your worship, through the council's question, I actually don't have that with me. I don't have the total on an average house at the moment. It was around 135, if I recall, per house. 156, okay. I, my memory also says 156 as well. For some reason, though, I would make sure we double check that number. 135 was our starting point here on base, and it was 156 across the street. Yeah, that number does sound familiar. But I don't have that either. Either with me tonight, sorry. All right, I am looking for a motion on the floor. Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Move that Woodstock City Council approve the 2024 revenue fund budget as amended and that the Director of Administrative Services be directed to prepare the necessary bylaw for council consideration. Thank you. Is there a seconder on that motion? Councillor Leatherborough. Discussion, or I should say further discussion, or questions of, of uh, staff. Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. The budget is set. Okay, moving along. Uh, nothing from engineering or cultural services tonight. Uh, Parks and Recreation 14D.1 license agreement with Woodstock Lawn Bowling. Looking for a motion because we're not done yet. Councillor Leatherborough. Move by myself that Woodstock City Council approves the licensee agreement license agreement between the city of Woodstock and the Woodstock Lawn Bowling Club and authorizes the mayor and clerk to execute the agreement. Thank you. A seconder. Councillor Lauder, discussion. Seeing none, I'm, I'm just going to comment. The Lawn Bowling Club has been a, a great community group here in the city they've had a great relationship and really happy to see this extend and uh by ex extending this or giving them a new uh agreement in place they can go after provincial and federal grants this way so uh wish them well and with that i'll call the vote all those in favor none opposed that is carried uh next up we have 14 d.2 single source tip o'neill bleacher tender Looking for a motion on the floor. Councillor Lauder. I'll move that Woodstock City Council approves $101,220 plus HST to the WH Reynolds Limited of Cambridge for the Tip O'Neill Ball Diamond Capital Project PKS00069. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Councillor Schattenberg, discussion? Seeing none, I'll just let, uh, for those watching at home, the reason it's a single source is we only got one tender, one bid, I guess, one, one submission. And anytime that happens, it's got to come back to council 
to be approved. The good news is, and I apologize, I don't have it in front of me, but my memory says we had $110,000 uh, budgeted for this. So it did come in under budget. So that's always a good news as well. So, uh, and with that, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. Moving along, uh, nothing from economic development, the clerks, the CAO, human resources, nothing from fire services, public works, or IT. Uh, no special committee and advisory task force reports this evening, but we do have a notice of motion. Councillor Lauder. Thank you. Whereas uh, M Heart Mental Health Engagement and Resource a Response Team, a joint project that includes CMHA of Thames Valley, is a program aimed at helping people experiencing mental health crisis by pairing police officers with mental health cl clinici clinicians. And whereas this provincial funding provides increased service levels to help police and local health and social services better focus their resources but more importantly, helps connect people in crisis with appropriate mental health supports. And whereas this, the Ontario government recognized the need for the service and provided $118,648 in funding to the Oxford County in the fall of 2023 as part of the Mobile Crisis Rapid Response Team, MCRT, Enhancement Grant, and whereas this funding was shared equally with communities across Oxford, regardless of population distribution. And whereas additional funding dedicated to the MHART program specifically with the Woodstock Police Service would be advantageous to increase this much needed service in the Woodstock community. And whereas the program has been in existence in Woodstock since 2018, providing a most valuable service in our community but due to the lack of funding cannot realize the full extent of benefits and savings this program can, can provide. And now therefore be it resolved that the Woodstock City Council request additional funding for this valuable service in order to provide additional MHART hours, either through the MHART program or the Mobile Crisis Rapid Response Team Enhancement Grant for the Woodstock Police Services to better and serve those in need in our community and further that this resolution be circulated to the Honorable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honorable Michael uh, Kirsner, Solicitor General of Ontario, the Honorable Ernie Hardiman, Oxford o MPP, and the Canadian Mental Health Association, Thames Valley Addiction and Mental Health Services. Thank you. As a notice of motion, we won't be discussing this any further, but it will be coming forward at a future meeting, at our next meeting, I should say. Sorry. Uh, new business. Uh, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mayor Accioni. Uh, moved by myself that Woodstock City Council reconsider the following motion from item 14.D.3 at the July 13th, 2023 regular council meeting. That motion read that Woodstock City Council approved the building of the new outdoor pool at Cowan Fields with a budget of five million three hundred and fifty thousand, with five million to be financed through debt and the decommissioning of, of Lions Pool. Thank you. And there's no debate on this one when it comes to uh, reconsideration. So I'm just going to call the vote. I'll, oh, a seconder. I'm sorry. I need a seconder. You're right. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Tate. Um, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Oh. To reconsider it. Right? That's just a reconsidering. So that means in order to put it back on the floor to consider it, we must pass this motion. Okay? If it doesn't pass, then the pool goes on like we originally planned as council already voted on that clear that, that good all right now where was i oh boy um all those in favor okay none opposed so that is reconsidered so we have a motion on the floor so we go back as if we never voted on it before um so looking for comments questions or a motion i guess would be i guess we have a motion that's right sorry you're right so the motion right now is this 
it's up for debate again. Comments from Councillor Martin since you moved the this. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Accio. Yeah, you just passed the baton. I <laughs> I understand. Um, so I I asked to bring this forward uh, for a couple of reasons. Knowing what we know now, uh, and knowing what I personally can only speak for myself, knowing what I knew in July of 2023, um, we have big financial considerations in front of us and ahead of us. Um, in conversations with the uh, recreation department, we have a great uh, indoor pool that has ample space for learn to swim programs um, and, and recreational swimming um, that was put to the test in this past year when Tilsonburg had to close their facility and many of those users came and, and made use of our facility and we still had some capacity. And so um, I asked uh, to bring this forward to reconsider that um, perhaps five, it's less than $5 million now because some work has been done on the project uh, that if we reconsider this uh, spend, um, it won't actually make a difference in the budget we just passed, but it will make a difference to future budgets and future costings and the future issuances of debt um, that, that will have a, a big impact on future budgets. A lot of futures, but absolutely. Councillor Tate. Through the chair. So I didn't support the motion originally. So when Councillor Martin asked me, I said, certainly. But um, I will say, I thought I was never voting on Lions Pool again, and you brought it back. So I completely agree that um, this is not the time to be spending the money. So because I didn't support it the first time, I'm not going to support it again. Thank you for bringing it back. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Leatherborough. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor Martin just answered all my questions, but I'm still going to ask uh, Mr. Connors. Um, that was my first question was, you know, will it be short water, water, how much do we have? So will this, if we, if we exit, stop it completely, will we, will that negatively impact the community, uh, the learn to swim standard? If you could speak to that, please. Uh, Your Worship, through to the counselor's question. Um, I don't believe it will, uh, especially in the, uh, uh, the short to midterm. Um, with Tilsonburg closing its indoor pool, um, we went from um, our high watermark in Learn to Swim in 2022 um, to when we then went to 2023, we increased by 79% uh, uh, year over year, and we still had available water. So um, it's, it's not a, a case of... Uh, not having enough water. The the only drawback that will come of this is there won't be, you know, Woodstock has had 70 years of outdoor water and now it won't. But uh, as far as the learn to swim program, um, it won't be affected. The Basically the only thing that's affecting the learn to swim program currently is uh, lack of change room space and, and we're getting short on instructors, but that has nothing to do with the uh, building pools. Thank you. And if I can continue, um, it's accurate to say that the um, expansion of the change rooms at the Aquatic Center are on deck to be expanded. Uh, your Worship, through to the Councillor's question, uh, yes, they are part of the capital plan um, going forward uh, in uh, 2025. Councillor Martin. And just to clarify on Mr. Connor's comments on my own comments, Tilsonburg's closure was a temporary closure. They were doing a renovation and now they are back open. And so we expect our own water supply to, you, know, you look like you have something to say. Your Worship, through the council's question, uh, it is a temporary closure. You're correct with that. They are, the last I heard, they are still not back open. Sometimes these closures take longer than anticipated. Thank you. Any other discussion? Councillor Lauder. Thank you. Through you, the Mayor, to Mr. Connors. Um, so um, if we turn this uh, down, and uh, do we have to make another motion to, to decommission the lines pool, or, or will that all be part of if, if we're not? To, what, what happens on that? Uh, Your Worship, through to the Councillor's question, I would have to... Like if that might be a clerk 
question as far as um, what the motion was. If it's, um, I, I don't believe council wants to reopen the lion's pool uh, piece. So um, that is what I'm trying so to I, get. I, I would clear. Clear. Yeah. Uh, your worship through to the councillor's question that an additional motion wouldn't be required in this case. Um, I don't believe we can undo that portion. I'm correct. And there is no budget, of course, to look at that, that we just... No, I just wanted to make sure, sure. That, that that's clear. <laughs> no, that's a fair question, actually. That's a good point, because it is written as part of that original motion. So, Councillor Wismer Van Meer. Um, through you, uh, the chair, to Mr. Connors, and I feel like I know the answer to this question, but this won't negatively impact any staffing issues. Like the staff that we currently have are not going to be affected. There won't be anything that's coming away from this if another pool, if this outdoor pool is not rebuilt. Uh, Your Worship, through the Councillor's question, no. Um, we, The province and the country are in a staffing shortage, so this is actually will will help, but no one will lose their uh, position due to this. Councillor Schattenberg. Yeah, I guess earlier in the meeting, we approved that the Southside Aquatic Center uh, wading pool would be free this year, but what's the progress there for, speaking about outdoor water on the outdoor community complex uh, splash pad uh, for this year with any chance whatsoever that that might be ready uh, for this uh, upcoming warm summer months. Uh, Your Worship, through to the Councillor's question. Um, right now, uh, we're getting ready to tender the document. Uh, it has uh, gone through um, a, a lot of the uh, architectural review uh, stage and conceptual stage. We're hoping to get this out in the next few weeks. Um, at that time, then it would be once uh, a contractor is, uh, is picked, um, it would kind of fall into their hands as far as timelines go. Uh, but we'd like to see it uh, obviously as soon as possible. But I, I can't promise this summer, but uh, if the stars align, we might get near the end of the summer where it could could be. But uh, again, it, it's not really in, in staff's hands at that point in time. Thank you. Any other thoughts, comments, questions of staff? Councillor Leatherborough. Through your worship, this will just be my last comment on it. But um, yeah, I think at the time when we were debating this, it was really just more challenging about what to do with Lions Pool, right? The cost to replace a bit of the liner and, and all of this. Um, that was not to say that we weren't all aware of this $5 million plus uh, piece. I just think that, that there was a lot of emphasis on what to do with this outdoor body of water. So to be able to reconsider it, thank you, Councillor Martin and um, Council for, for supporting this option. I just feel that in today's economy, spending that much money for something that could potentially be served, used in the community for two months. Um, I do feel comfortable to, uh, supporting not to go forward with it. So those are my comments <laughs> to not support it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other comments or questions? Yeah, I've had the blessed opportunity to sit in these council chambers for nine years now and nine years we have talked about lion's pool uh, and long before me <laughs> that i was ever here um again very sad day when that day came but we know it was coming or knew it was coming along the lines of councillor leatherborough this is um it's a tough decision for something that's used two maybe three months of the year with uh, financial burden, we've talked about so much here tonight. I'm actually okay with Councillor Martin and thank her for bringing this forward. Uh, I think looking at the bigger picture of everything else that's moving, the way inflation has hit us all, I am going to make sure I get this right, vote against the motion on the floor. So again, I'll remind Council that if you do not want an outdoor pool, you must vote against the motion that's on the floor. If you want an outdoor pool, you must vote in favor of this motion that's on the floor. Is that clear enough for everybody? And for those at home watching? <laughs> Any final comments or questions? 
Seeing none, I'll call a vote. All those in favor of an outdoor pool. Against the motion as read. All right, that is unanimous. Um, apologize to staff. I know some work has been um, done and put together, and I know we've got some cost incurred, but again, I think in the larger picture, this is probably a wiser decision looking at the financial pressures on everyone these days. So moving along. Um, sorry, Councillor Leatherborough. Moved by myself, whereas the Canadian Mental Health Association of Ontario provided a 2024 pre-budget submission to the Ontario government entitled Maintaining the Momentum, Supporting the Community Mental Health and Addiction Sector, and whereas this submission recommends a 7% increase in funding for the Community Mental Health and Addiction Sector, and whereas CMHA branches divert visits to emergency departments, saving $7.5 in hospital costs over the past two years, and whereas CMHA proposes to expand the availability of crisis response models, allowing paramedics and police officers to get back on the road quicker after responding to a crisis. And whereas the work of CMHA supports municipalities in addressing the homelessness crisis. And whereas CMHA branches are experiencing significant staff turnover due to stagnating wages. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Woodstock City Council supports the Canadian Mental Health Association of Ontario's 2024 pre-budget submission to the Ontario government and the request for increased funding. And further, that this resolution be circulated to the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Peter Bethlen Falvey, Minister of Finance, the Honourable Ernie Hardiman, Oxford MPP, and the Canadian Mental Health Association, Thames Valley Addiction and Mental Health Services. Thank you. Do we have a seconder on the motion? Councillor Lauder, Councillor Leatherborough, would you like to speak to this? Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I'm assuming everyone read it. I hope the public reads it as well. Um, sort of on the tail end of our last meeting, um, a resident actually sent this to me. So had they not sent it to me, I would not have come across it. Not as familiar with the provincial budget, which is to be passed next week. So it's something else to um, engage in and learn learn more about, but nevertheless, there was so much important information in this. I'm, I'm happy to, you know, bring correspondence here, write correspondence, work together to identify needs uh, within Woodstock and Oxford County. So um, without rereading the entire thing for everyone's benefit, I just want to share a couple little pieces um, from the submission. So an analyst of crisis response models from just 10 CMHA branches shows that they have diverted more than 17,700 visits to EDs over the past two years. The average cost for a mental health ED visit, visit, ED emergency department, visit in Ontario has been estimated at $423, meaning these branches have saved the taxpayer $7.5 million in hospital costs. We want to expand the availability of these crisis response models across the province. And then to specifically talk about Woodstock, Oxford County, which is CMHA Thames Valley Mental Health and Addictions Crisis Center, there is a spotlight. Um, and I'll read that and then we'll, we'll move on. So launched in 2016, the Mental Health and Addictions Crisis Center supports individuals who are experiencing a mental health and addiction crisis in the community. Operated by CMHA Thames Valley, the Crisis Centre has drop-in services for both individual clients and first responders. The Crisis Centre has be been central to mental health and addictions, frontline care in the community, helping people in crisis to get the appropriate support they need. Since opening, the centre has diverted more than 3,000 ED visits. First responders, such as paramedics and police officers, can drop off clients in crisis in under 10 minutes, making responders quickly available for emergency service response. Moreover, the environment at the crisis center is trauma-informed and sensitive to mental health related to, to related challenges rather than the overwhelming conditions of a hospital ED. So I do hope we can support this um, and get it to the right hands before next week. And I think that this is really important for the city of Woodstock. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on this motion? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. Thank you for putting that forward. Uh, and that brings us to draft bylaws. So we're almost done. Uh, Councillor Shattenberg. 
Moved by Councillor Schadenberg, seconded by Councillor Tate, that the following bylaws be given a first and second reading, 9670-24, a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw number 8626-10, as amended, ZN 8-23-19 for 1015 Ridgeway Road. 9671-24, a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw number 8626-10, as amended, ZN 8-23-20 for 54 Kent Street. 9672-24, bylaw to amend zoning bylaw number 8626-10 as amended for ZN 8-23-04 uh, for addresses 52 and 58 Park Row. 9673-24, bylaw to amend zoning bylaw number 8626-10 as amended, uh, ZN 8-22-17 for 95 Victoria Street South. Thank you. Any questions on those or concerns? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? None opposed. Those are carried. Councillor Schadenberg. Yeah, moved by Councillor Schadenberg, seconded by Councillor Tate that the following bylaws be given a third and final reading, 9670-24 through 29673-24. Thank you. Last chance. Any questions on those? Seeing none, all those in favor? Those are carried. All right, everybody. Well, we got through that. Um, and closing remarks. We're going to start with Councillor Martin tonight. All right, I'll keep it sweet and short, short and sweet. Um, I appreciate the work that everyone did to uh, to get us through this budget. I appreciate staff time. Um, I probably sent out more questions uh, than I ever imagined that I would, uh, but I it was a key in, in making decisions. Um, but as we look forward to the coming days, um, tomorrow I'll be heading up to Tavistock, well actually to Hickson, East Zora Tavistock is, has their grand opening for their new municipal office tomorrow. Uh, so I'll be making my way up there, weather permitting, to uh, congratulate them and take a look around and maybe get ideas for our own future council chambers. Thank you, we're gonna bounce. Councillor Tate. Uh, anybody that knows me knows that I with the most spending, so I only shop at thrift stores. So just a comment, I went to uh, Soda Pop and Mary Gold's, and it is a consignment store now in Second Chance, and she has done a phenomenal job, and it's beautiful inside, so I encourage everybody to come downtown and uh, take a look, because it, it is very nice. Um, and just a final note, so the late cat for about three days is really good advice way back when, and his advice that I took to heart was, there's two people there's two departments in the building that are the most important that you should both focus on. IT and the custodial department. And it's true, so sorry to all the people with your degrees and everything else, but that that's the people who keep the place running and that we never seem to acknowledge enough. So and on that note, um, our custodian that was always in the council chambers retired last week, but he was quiet about it, so we think that this at council, but um, Calvin was a great man. I appreciate him immensely, and thank you for his service. But I know um, it was exhausting. Thank you, Councillor Wismer Van Meer. All right, I'm gonna have a, another really long night tomorrow, so I'm gonna make it quick. We have our trivia night for Big Brothers Big Sisters. So, talking about weather pending, nobody bring any of that because we had to cancel our event last year and postpone it by three weeks. So put all that good vibe out there that this weather is not bad. Um, of course, Easter's coming up, so I hope everybody has a wonderful Easter. Easter's always one of those special ones for me growing up in a house that, you know, where my mom made chocolate and the Easter bunny came regularly and shopped at our place. Um, keep in mind, we have some great local businesses uh, that I know the Easter bunny visits habitual and uh, my friend Kat at Fair Square as well. If you have the dairy-free vegan folks like myself in your household, that's where you can find all that great stuff. Um, and Woodstock is going to have their Easter egg hunt on Saturday, March 30th. That's at Victoria Park starting at 10 a.m. So I hope you all have a wonderful and happy Easter and we'll see you back here in April. Thank you. Councillor Leatherborough. Um, I have a bit of a personal uh, reflection tonight. So um, I was born in Woodstock at the old Woodstock Hospital, uh, grew up on a chicken farm in Hagersville, and then my post-secondary years were living in the city of Guelph where I met my husband. And 10 years ago today, we moved to the city of Woodstock. And so to 
get through the budget. Um, again, to, to your comments, Councillor Martin, with incredible staff and feedback from residents, that was a lot. Um, but we're on the other side and we'll go home and get feedback. So um, it's just a really special day. We showed up with one kid and the municipal water was so great. We added three more kids. So um, it's just definitely been um, a, a real privilege and honor to be around this horseshoe celebrating 10 years with my family in the city of Woodstock. Cool. Thank you. Councillor Lauder. Thank you. I have a few things from the art gallery. Of course, they always have to bring things from that. Uh, the upcoming Creative PA days, April 8th and May 31st, ages 5 to 12. Creative PA day programs include art making activities and lessons, and it is designed to provide time and space for interactive creativity and social engagement. Cost $55. Um, and, our, and the gallery members, it's $45. And, and there is a before and after care available for additional $10 per day. Uh, and that is from 8.30 to 4.30. And um, their day last week was such a success. There was lots going on there. So it was really enjoyed by everyone. Uh, Dasso on Thursday, March 28th is bringing back their soup stock. Join Dasso and, and our local restaurants to celebrate and raise funds to support for Dasso. And it's being held at the Goff Hall of the Community Complex. Two sittings, one 11.30 to 12.45, and the other one is 12.45 to 2 p.m. Tickets are $20 in advance or $25 at the door. And the, the Woodstock District just came out today. The Woodstock Police Service is accepting applications for the Youth in Policing Initiative Program for this summer. This program will engage the students in positive, productive activities in a safe and healthy environment. And you can find out more about this uh, program uh, just by accessing, accessing the application form. Visit www.woodstockpolice.ca slash YIPI. And after going through approximately 4,000 names suggested for the recently new um, police dog, uh, the name has been announced and it is Cruz. Thanks to all who sent in their suggestions. Cruz has been has uh, participated in action and he is up and ready to uh, go to work. And um, I want to thank staff for all the information um, and uh, the help that it has given me throughout this budget. And thanks for all their hard work in preparing this budget. And I just want to wish everyone a happy Easter and keep safe. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not least, Councillor Schattenberg. I think I did this to your last meeting, and I apologize. I, I feel bad right now. But I, I've got a long story that you'll appreciate, okay. Mayor Accioni. Looking forward to it. I remember back when I was sports editor of the Sutton Review back in the 1990s, there was a high school basketball program called Captain's Veterans that Bill Gillespie would run out of Huron Park. Always great fundraiser for many, many charities, uh, Salvation Army and, and the likes, and even the Terry Fox Foundation at uh, that point in time. And... Um, one thing Bill Gillespie always insisted on doing in the Sutton Review Sports Department doing, making sure I got to all seven high schools to take headshots of all the players, junior and senior, who are participating in the game. So it was also always good uh, reference, a good pr promotion for the game. But anyway, the 2024 boys, Captain's Veterans Basketball Games, um, in honor of Bill Gillespie, uh, will be taking place on a, a week from tonight, Thursday, March 28th, this time at uh, Woodstock Collegiate Institute. Tickets are five dollars for adults, three dollars for students, and uh, kids under ten are uh, free. Junior game at six p.m., senior game at uh, seven forty-five, and of course, uh, Jerry Accioni and I both know Bill Gillespie very, very well, and, and Mr. Accioni would know Mr. Gillespie also from years at the Huron Park. So, uh, I certainly don't forget that, that sporting event a week from tonight. No vets comments. Yeah, I guess game five is tomorrow night for the Woodstock Navy Vets against the Norwich Merchants Battle of Highway 59. Woodstock won the first three games. Norwich won uh, game four, two to one. So game five is on Friday night at the community complex. Yes, that is correct. That's what I thought you were going to bring forward, actually. But yes, uh, I, I just want to start out. Um, Calvin, uh, happy retirement. Uh, you're great around here. 
the greatest thing about Calvin is at night, he d- doesn't never spoke a lot, but he was a great listener. And many times sat in my office when he was coming in and kind of doing his rounds. And we'd always have a, a few words to say, and, and I'm going to miss that. I'm, I'm going to. So Calvin, I hope you have a, a great retirement for sure. Um, want to say congratulations to the entire team that put together the Oxford County Career Expo today. That was phenomenal. My goodness. Uh, I was kind of bouncing back and forth there throughout the day. And every time I went, it was packed. Um, it was a great success. Um, heard rough numbers of 3,000 students and anywhere from 750 to 1,000 others to the general public. So it was a uh, fantastic. And I just want to say thank you to all the organizers to do that and involve all the schools, high schools, sorry, um, in, uh, in Woodstock is phenomenal. So to the Thames Valley district school board, thank them, um, to the Christian school board, thank them. Thank you all for, for doing that. That was fantastic to see. Uh, and I mentioned bouncing in between because I was also at the uh, VON March for Meals campaign today. So I got to go around to a uh, half dozen different people and give their meals on wheels to them. And that is, <clears throat> sorry, so rewarding to know. And they're so appreciative. And I just want to say thank you to VON and all the work they do. They are constantly looking for volunteers. So I want to say thank you, Billy, for driving and being such a regular Volunteer, you took me around last year as well, and we did it together, uh, and I really appreciated that. So thank you to all those volunteers that make that program and others possible. I was able to, I cannot go tomorrow to see uh, our neighbors at EZT, but I want to congratulate them on a beautiful building. I, I ran out earlier this week. I got to see it. Beautiful council chambers uh, building. I really like what they've done, so I just want to say congratulations to them. Recognize we're almost done here tonight. Happy Easter, everyone. I look forward to seeing you on the 30th. Uh, I hope you enjoy your family, friends. Just spend it with those that are most important. And most of all, thank you, staff. Uh, this has been a grueling few months of putting this budget together. Uh, I've never worked on something so hard in my life. This is, is what you've done to put this together and put this forward and answer all of our questions. It just thank you does not, is not enough. I'm the first one to admit, but for those that have been here and we've had a full house virtually all night tonight. So thank you. And most of them are staff. They're curious what's going on. And uh, I, I just want to say thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts on behalf of all of council. I think we all can agree that we have the best staff in the world. Keep doing what you're doing and we're gonna support you any way we can. Yes, we're gonna make some tough decisions, but I hope you understand where they're coming from. So on behalf of all of us, thanks everybody. We are adjourned. Oh, looking for adjournment. Councillor Wismer Van Meer, second by Councillor Martin, all those in favor. Now we're adjourned. Thanks everybody. <laughs>